All right, I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. If you all would please join me for a pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chris, would you lead us in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful opportunity we have to gather here today. Please be with each and every one of us as we make decisions for our county that we use the wisdom and the guidance that you've entrusted in us. Heavenly Father, let's pray for everybody in this room as they leave here in the safety on the roads. Let's pray for the ones in our community that have recently lost loved ones. Let's pray for their healing and their comfort. Thank you for everything and what you do for us. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Excuse me. Call the roll, please. <coughs> Todd Polar. Here. Chris Leiter. Here. Kenny Green. Here. J.D. Jones. Here. Kirby Melvin. <coughs> Crystal Hines. All right. Thank you, Susan. Uh, welcome, everyone, that has come out today for this meeting. Uh, we're going to try to breeze through some things. We do have public comment at the end. We also have a couple of different presentations from uh, from Doug Salisbury with ACES, and we have Charlie Liston here to talk about environmental issues. Uh, so if you could just bear with us and let us get through some things, and then we'll open the floor for public comment. Sound good? All right. Uh, going along, we'll start off with approval of minutes from the regular meeting on July 15th, 2019. Motion to approve. Thank you, Kenny. Second. Thank you, Chris. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, guys. Now we have a special meeting from July 24th, 2019. So moved. Thank you, Kirby. No second. Thank you, JD. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Now the special meeting from July 25th, 2019. Motion to approve. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, JD. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Now, a special meeting from July 26, 2019. Motion to approve. Thank you, Kenny. I'll second it. Thank you, JD. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, a special meeting on August the 6th, 2019. So moved. Thank you, Kirby. I'll second. <clears throat> Thank you, Chris. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Now the final <coughs> special meeting from August 9th, 2019. Thank you, JD. I second. Thank you, Chris. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> Thank you all. All right, now we'll move right on to the treasurer's monthly report. Okay. <coughs> As of July 31st, 2019, our total CDs and passbooks total Six hundred and eighty thousand two hundred and sixteen dollars and ninety two cents. Our total, um, including all of our checking accounts, are um, two million two hundred and fifty thousand four hundred and ninety one dollars and ninety seven cents. Any questions on the monthly report? Thank you, Kirby. We have a motion to approve the treasurer's monthly report. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, JD. Any more discussion on that? All those in favor? Uh, no. Thank you, guys. Now the approval of transfers. Okay. Um, in the general fund, both of these from the reserve for transfers, $476 to PDA statutory contributions for, and 4000 to community contributions. In the road fund, from the reserve for transfers, $5,000 to road miscellaneous and we're also asking for a cash transfer from the general fund to the LGEA fund of $5,000. Motion to approve. Thank you, Kenny. Uh, second. Thank you, Chris. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Uh, uh, thank you, gentlemen. All right, and now the approval of claims and late claims. Okay, in the general fund, the pre-approved claims for, uh, total $40,854.44 and the court claims total 
$762.36. That makes a, a grand total of $106,616.80 in the general fund. Any questions in the general? Is that just pre approved or is that all, all the claims? That includes all the claims. claims. Mm -hmm. Well, I got a couple. Uh, claim number 1915 for mileage for adoption day and passport for shots. What, what's that? That's where the guys uh, they use their own vehicle, or yes, they did, and they had to drive down. It's the passport for shops. Yeah. Is they had to drive down there? I think three times. Yes. Is that right, Greg? Yeah, yeah three, three times. Three to, trips for three shots for their rabies. And oh, that's for your own. Okay. Personal okay. shots. Personal shots. Yeah. Right. Not yeah. animal shots. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You know, on the on their humans. Yeah. Okay. And then the one right <laughs> under that, couldn't we have searched that online for that vehicle? Yeah, uh, I just I yeah, think it would be cheaper. It it would be okay, but I'm I still want to ask you to do this since you did drive around. Sure. Right. I've got a I got a couple on page two of four, our emergency repairs. I I like to ask our analyst guy or our here. Oil changes and rebuilt tension and a blower motor. Can we do that in house? No. Our, well, we got a question about the emergency repairs. Uh, you, you, you got one on here for all changes. Then you got one on here for V-belt tension pulley. Then there's one on a blower motor. Can we do that in house down here at our road barn? Um, honestly, I think that anything dealing with emergency uh, equipment has to be an EVT certified person. If you have an EVT person, uh, well, we could. I, we need to check that out. I don't know. I mean, if we can get that done in house, it's a lot. I, I think we've run into this issue before. We it have does have to be certified. Somebody through that EVT. Which is is our body is our body man certified to do that? He contracts in. Okay. What about what unit was this that on the tension pulley and stuff? Is it the same one? It's hundred dollar to death. Yes, sir. The 2002 model, isn't it, Chris or Will? Yes. Sir. Then, then one more, the Cummins, the Cummins thing on the the generator. What did we have done there? That was where lightning struck the EMS building and took out the generator. We we do have a claim with Keiko that we're going to be reimbursed on those. Okay, because that's three thousand seven hundred twenty-six dollars. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Okay, you right. did you did turn it in? Yes, sir. Okay. I right, went about the Boonies water conditioning at animal shelter for three hundred fifty-six dollars and fifty cents. What's that? That that is their water cooler, the initial installation of it, and then they'll get a jug from the water, from the from the campaign part of that. Uh, I haven't asked them yet, but I believe so since everything's half with them. I, I'll ask them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Dana, <laughs> why we, well, I guess we go to Lake Changer this. I need to back up to that Trimble County water thing that I put up at that meeting. Is it on the claims? No, it, it well, it's, it, it's, last. it was on <coughs> where it was denied. I want to go ahead and get that cleared out. Oh, yeah. Hi. Absolutely. Yeah. And and as far as I understand, Kirby, I think Regina's already taken the check out there, haven't you? Uh, well, it, yeah, it, it cleared the bank. Okay, I want to so, make sure it so was. So it was, yeah, because okay. I saw that too. So, yeah. Just want to make sure it was done. About the hydrants. It was done, $540. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. don't, on the last line, uh, page one, one under the claims uh, for machinery and tools with that water pump. Didn't we do that last month? Put that on there. Where's this at, Kenny? You talking about from from yeah Melvin and Clemens. Yeah, I, I uh, reimbursement. Yeah, reimbursement. It's a hard item to find, and then I found one. I thought we did that well, last month. Though. He, yeah, and the check was sent to his post office box, but he does not have a post office box oh, anymore. It's, it's, uh, oh, so we're not just to so we're not paying right. twice as right. right. going right. For it. And we we voided that check or and canceled payment at the okay. moment. All right, any other questions about the general claims? Can I have a motion to accept these claims? So moved. Thank you, Kirby. Yeah, I second. Thank you, Chris. And all those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, thank you. Okay, Regina. 
and the road fund, the pre-approved claims are $964.10, and the court claims total $33,912.68, uh, which makes a grand total of $34,000. $876.78. Any questions? Yeah, I got a question. Uh, it's claim number 1993 is for, I can ask Mike, it's the concrete retaining blocks. We bought them seriously. Mm -hmm. Why we, I mean, we bought $5,000 worth. It's sitting down there at the park we can use. We already used them all? Yeah. Well, no, they're set up down there at the park. Well, so we right bought. Down, I got 20 just to have, got there at the shop. And I've done used uh, all that. But, uh, well, you can go down there to the park and get them anytime you want, was the understanding. I think that when we bought those, we will use them throughout the year. Uh, I mean, that's that's if you can use them. If we, if, you know, I, when we spent five thousand dollars on them, I was on the understanding they would use them through the fair, and we'd use them through the year if we needed. Yeah, we can use them. I know they put put it made it a wall. That it was my misunderstanding. It was just gonna be alongside the track, but yeah, I mean, it's a wall or dirt. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, we've done that. We've so we'll figure something out, Mike, to get, to get some of them and then move them around. Uh, I, I know it might be. Extra, right. Crazy the whole world. That's a hot item. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Very hot. I, just, I can talk to you afterwards, maybe. So. That was my understanding. We bought them that after the fair, we could use, use them, them both. And they didn't, uh, because of the weather, they didn't even get to have their, their yeah. demolition derby and stuff. Uh, that uh, they're trying to plan one now. Yeah. Uh, so it does make it kind of uh, <coughs> tough to take them right now. And I think they're looking at, uh, Vicki, do you remember what dates? The end of this month, they're looking at doing one, and in the beginning or mid of next month, so they're September. wanting to do another one. Yeah. So they're wanting to do a. They've got four that they're trying to line out, two that they're trying to get done right now. Okay. All right. <coughs> Good deal. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or concerns about the road claims, guys? We have a motion to accept them. So move. All right. Thank you, JD. Thank you, Chris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you all. All right. Okay. Uh, in the jail fund, the pre-approved claims are eighty dollars and seventy-six cents, and the court claims are six thousand six hundred and seventy-nine dollars and seventy-six cents. That makes a total of six thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars and fifty-two cents for the jail claims. Any questions on those? About as cheap as it's been for a while. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I don't think Carroll County's is in there. No, I don't know. I look. Mm -hmm. you know, they'll make up for it next month. Next yeah. month, yeah. it'll be yeah. low one <coughs> All right. Do we have a motion to accept that? So moved. Thank you, Kirby. Thanks. Thank All right. Thank you, Chris. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Thank you, guys. All right. And in the LGEA fund, uh, the pre-approved claims are $2,636.24. The court claims are $3,413.15. That makes a total LGEA claims of $6,049.39. Any questions on the LGEA fund? Yeah, I just wonder, where do we install a new water line for $407? At the park. At the park. Install. I know yeah. it's the park. It's yeah. install new water line. That was uh, where they were running a, a water line up by the uh, <coughs> the pavilion, the uh, up by the senior center. So, so it's so not they they an old one. We actually installed it. Right. The old one busted underground. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> okay. All right. And we had to have we shut it down at the meter till they got this summer where they could fix it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bruce. Motion to approve. Thank you, Kenny. And nice. we have a second. Thank nice you, Chris. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Okay. And then we have the gross wages report. All right. Still good. We need to watch her over time. And I think we've seen that come down you quite a bit. We got, we got, I know we got, I mean, I'm not taking on you Greg or nothing but I'm here you all did a lot of good work out there but our oh, our full-time guy didn't even get his 40 hours in and our part-time guy is averaging at 20 hours a week he's averaging almost 30 so bring bring our full-time guy his, well, his is based on a 40 hour week and he only worked 76 right. hours in two so weeks he missed he missed four hours well I mean I think it was reason. a doctor appointment or something he had to go to okay well, that he missed 
just kind of keep an eye on it. We had <laughs> three hours overtime there. So. Well, some of that time I had is, is we spent um, training. training and uh, we worked up at the, the racetrack. Right. So we got um, doing the donations. Yeah, we're getting 67 hours. Uh, time donated from the racetrack to the shelter. We're working up there. All right. And uh, we also did some training on a Friday, Saturday. We went up to, what was it, Green, I think it was Green County. It was up along the, um, went to Cincinnati and went east a little bit. Their uh, animal shelter up there had some training. It was okay. free training. We just had to get there. All right. So okay. that was a uh, Friday and a Saturday all day. Okay. And that's, that's the only reason as ours got put up there is because I try to maintain the hours at uh, about, about 20, 21 hours a week or so. All right. So it just, everything happened. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Everything all piled right. up in July was, you know, it was a big month. Was, <coughs> okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Any other questions about the wages and hour report? Uh, Judge, yes, sir. We need to go into executive session or something here on an employee. Okay. Do you want to hold it off? Well, our attorney's going to be leaving. She's at leaving at 10 30. Yeah. So I need to get, mm -hmm. We need to get this. Resolved. All right. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll make a motion we go out of our regular session. All right. Do we have a second? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. For what? It's reason? for the, the purpose under KRS exception discussion of discipline or dismissal of an individual employee, correct? Yes. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. okay. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Any discussion on it? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, 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 all right. Now I'll make a motion we go into the executive session on the same KRS number. And do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, folks, I'm going to have to ask you to step out for a minute <coughs> or 10. All right, this court will come back to order. Uh, go ahead. Judge, I'll make a motion that we the termination of Vicki Shuck for gross negligence of taxpayers' money. Uh, second. All right. Uh, Susan, will you call the roll for a voice vote, please? Yes. District 1, Chris Leiter. Yes. District 2, Kenny Green. Yes. District 3, J.D. Jones? Yes. District 4, Kirby Melvin? Yes. Judge Executive, Todd Pollock? No. All right, thank you. All right, let's uh, move on to the uh, uh, department reports. Greg, we'll start off with you. months we take and outcomes are a little bit on the low side this time we took in 20 animals and we only managed to adopt out 11 uh, part of that reason was when um, Verizon disconnected a couple of the extra phone lines it was at the shelter nobody checked to see what was on those lines first so we lost our internet for over three weeks and we weren't able to meet compliance with the state and um, documentation of animals we had. Plus we couldn't list a pet point for anybody to view the animals we had for adoption. So our numbers are a little bit low there. Uh, since we got our internet back up in August here so far, we have taken in 12 dogs, but we also have adopted out a total of 20. They're just having the internet service down there is really, you know, keeps our numbers good. Uh, the internet helps us a lot because we've had people hour, hour and a half away adopt their animals. We just had a, a family from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan drive down seven hours Saturday to pick up one of our animals. I mean, it's, it's amazing, you know, how that helps us. Uh, we do have one animal down here now. It's a uh, bite quarantine. 
It's a cane corso. It's like a massive mix. Mm. Part oh, a big dog. Yeah, it's a big dog. Uh, after the 10 day quarantine period, the, the owners are going to have the animal um, euthanized because it's bit more than one person. So we're dealing with that. How many euthanizing, uh, euthanizing have you done this year, Greg? This year, probably any of uh, eight. I mean, we have probably one of the lowest euthanized. Uh, well, I know we have the state. lowest in the state. We we'll probably do uh, maybe one percent. In the last fiscal year, we only did I think thirteen out of three hundred forty-eight animals, and they're vicious or sick animals. I mean, we just don't do it. euthanize an animal to clear the shelter up. <coughs> um, also, last month we ran out of dog food, so we had to go down to Sligo Feed Mill and purchase some dog food. And since then, we've had about fifty pounds of dog feed donated by the public and they also between the dog feed bleached on paper towels they donate to help keep keep us going that way we keep the the, uh, the shelter good and clean because uh, Dawn is animal friendly and the bleach helps kill parvoviruses which you know if that gets into the shelter then all the all animals the die with a matter of days so we keep it clean you know bleached down uh, and you get that new pressure washer from the... Uh, it's, they're doing a little bit of rehab on the, the connections to, to get it. So we're going to set the pressure washer up in the one room. That way we can actually pressure wash the, the kennels out. Plus it would give us an opportunity to clean the building up better because the, the building really needs cleaned. And, and what the pressure washer guys is where they had applied for this grant through the Cattlemen's. Yeah, you got that. It was you got $350 grant. So it's pretty well covered, the pressure washer, plus we got an additional 150 foot hose. That's what we're matting together That's right now. Chicken. So that way we can get clear around the shoulder to keep everything you know, cleaned up. Um, we're also going to need a new sign along the highway, <coughs> well, in front of the shoulder. The one we have is uh, wood that it's rotted out. We did have a person stop by Friday and help us fabricate a couple piece of angle iron to get it put back up so it's not laying on the ground. But uh, we're looking at a metal sign and we thought we had a PO made for a company here that they wanted a $280 or it was less than $300 for a sign. Then when we called up to finalize it they said there's also an additional $580 for shipping so we canceled that PO. That's I mean that's outrageous. So we're trying to see if we can get uh, help from the community on getting us a new sign. Uh, finally received a decent bid for the replacement of the rear door. Uh, a couple of the contractors we called, nobody even bothered to come out or return our calls. One contractor was local, gave a, a bid, an estimate just for the door and the hardware of $5,800, which was, I think, way out of line. And that was his cheapest bid, wasn't it? He gave yeah, that bids. was, well, if he replaced the door frame and the door, it would have been $8,300. So we got a contractor from Carrollton, we talked to him, he came out and he submitted a bid, which I believe the judge has. I think for, it's in your packets, guys. Yeah, for $1,450. And Henry County has confirmed they will they will do half this. You know, I mean, the door's bad, it's got holes in it, it's it's falling apart. But that's <clears> the door, uh, closer hardware, you know, lock assembly, you know, insulation, so I think that's the best we can do. I, I know Tommy, and he, he does good work. So. You know, that's what I heard. That's yeah. why, you know, we, I heard about him, so we called him, and he was interested. He came out and looked at everything, and yeah. and uh, he liked the fact it was a steel craft door, and I'm pretty sure he's getting the door from uh, Do It Best. Okay. I think that's where he gets most of it. He said they stock that type of door. And we're getting one with a window in it. They're, they call it half light, I think is what it's called. Because mm -hmm. The more light we let in from the outside, the less electricity we got to burn on interior lights for the animals. So I think it, you know, the, a little bit more for the windows is good. Um, we're looking, we still need a, a new animal control vehicle. The one we got is 10 years old. Uh, the engine's giving us some problems. And the right front wheel, I think the, uh, the linkage tie rod or something is going on it because between the, the, the steering shaking and the tire wearing bad, it needs needs some work on. So what I did is I went around trying to get some bids from 
different dealerships. I tried Tri-County Ford and uh, LaGrange Champion Motors and Earl Floyd. And the, owner, the only dealership that uh, returned a bid was Champion Motors. I don't know, I guess Earl Floyd doesn't like us or something. Is that a state price or? Uh, well, I asked him for a bid. I told him it was for the Connie, you know, and uh, like I said, Champions Union wanted to reply to us, and they didn't give us a firm bid because I wasn't sure what type of bed treatment, you know, uh, liner, rubber mat, and what type of cap, you know, we needed on the truck because we had, need something, you know, to help cover the animals up. So, like I said, so, uh, Champion Motors is the only one that bothered to, you know, re return something. So, if you know anybody else that wants to give us a bid, I got a list of a few things we would like, you know, um, preferably, you know, no carpet in a vehicle, you know, vinyl so we clean it. Uh, I was looking at the four-wheel drive, four-door, because some of the calls we go on, we have to take two vehicles because we can get everybody in, you know, either vehicle, mm -hmm. plus haul animals, and a tow package capable of hauling 5,500 pounds because we've got that two-wheel a tandem trailer we haul animals in with go for transport. So I give you a list of what I you know presented at the different dealerships, you know, along with everything else here. I I seen that but I think we need to look at the used. No, that's fine. Right. Well. I mean I just I wanted to get something to you know to right. get a base a price off of. Did, did he give us a price on this? I see the MSRP on it but I don't uh, see a top of her. Forty pounds. Yeah, he listed it forty. Well, that's and the I MSRP, think he, though. I mean, yeah. and then it says a discount. It was uh, thirty. I think it was thirty-one on the bottom line of that. You know, which is. I like to be able to get with uh, Mike back there, a road guy. Yeah. Yeah. See what's one of the better trucks we got in the road department, and maybe purchase a couple for the road department. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like right. I said, up there at uh, Stinglers. Oh yeah, wherever. It's yeah. in Frankfurt. Yeah, new used. I mean, yeah. we don't care. We just need, need a new you know, vehicle. Yeah, we need a new vehicle. Like the, like the table of the truck. And I will yeah, make we'll a talk about that here. And yeah. I will make a motion on the Lindsay construction. All right. To go ahead with the door. All right, we've got a motion on the floor uh, to go ahead with Lindsay construction to fix the door, the rear door, the animal shelter. The, the cost is 1450 Henry County said they will split it with us. I'm excited. And we have a second. Any discussion on that, guys? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all right. Thank you all. Yes. All right. uh, you the new prices on trucks, I figured we get, need some for a baseline. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, Absolutely. Uh, and I figured, well, I wanted to try to keep, you know, business as local as we could. That's why I went to LaGrange and um, Carrollton, because those are the only dealerships I knew that were close. I didn't want to go to Indiana. <laughs> I think the previous court bought one for the park and it was like fourteen thousand and so it looks new. Yeah. I mean so that's, we could we could really search the pre owned vehicles too though. No, that, that's good. Like I said, I just was you know, trying to get a bid so we got you know, had something to base some pricing on. All right. Uh, can, can we uh, have them well I know you're you're talking about passing down a, a road department truck. Well, or get one from up there, you know we yeah. Yeah. Mike on it. And well, Mike, Mike's up next and he can talk about yeah. us going That's what I was going to say. Maybe let him look for trucks under 20000 or something like that to see if he could come up with something suitable to what he's looking for or, or would be better just have the road department pass one down. Well, that's what I mean. What I've, he'll be let's, up here. Yeah, let's okay. let Mike right. come on up here. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 Like I said, the, the four door would help because when we do uh, adoption events, you know, we're hauling numerous people because the last time we had to take uh, two vehicles because we couldn't get the animals you know the, <coughs> their tables and you know a little tent shelter and stuff all in one if we're looking at something with a four-door if we're going to have enough we can haul you know a few people with us to put our supplies and a couple of animals in the back so that's yeah. why i was looking at that i, I was just thinking they don't feed anything as okay. heavy duty as what the no, local no. one has, so. I, I, I was at a meeting our night work. There was a couple of Henry County officials, and they did compliment you and Jacob for the work you're doing out there. So well, keep well, up you. the good work, all right? Almost, Mike. <laughs> we're, we're trying. I all mean, right. it's just, you know, working what, with what we have. And all right. Well, I appreciate it. Keeping after things, and <clears throat> I'll leave you all that information. All right. Thank you. There you go. Oh, this is a whole bunch of stuff. I'll print it out for you guys here in a little bit. All right. And now, Mike uh, Stewart. And Mike, talk about our trip to Frankfurt, if you could. We looked, we looked at some 
pretty good job. <coughs> have, you know, cast our own stuff down. Big one. Yeah, and, and down there at Larry Stigler's, they have, I don't know if you all are familiar with them. Southern they have trucks. A, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Southern trucks. 22 <coughs> to 25,000. Yeah. Uh, those were F 250s, gas motors. Yeah. Uh, pretty which, much plain Jane. Which one do we need to replace the road bar? Uh, could be a single cab at three quarter ton. Because right. that's cool. <coughs> right over Chevy's out there getting bad shape. Right, I've seen that. Wouldn't you recommend four doors? Yeah. 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 That's what I told him we talked I, about. And I long. think for animal too. Yeah. I think. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah they, they had some pretty good looking trucks down there. They're clean, brown good. And they got the, they don't have carpet in them, some uh, of them don't, yeah. No. Do they come with any type of a warranty at all or is it just I didn't what I don't think so. I, don't I think, think you have to buy the warranty. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's extra. And, the, and these trucks are, uh, <coughs> the ones that we looked at were southern trucks, no rust on them, okay. and, uh, and they had high yeah. miles. High mileage? Yeah, 150 to 170, I think, so thousand miles for some of them. If we found one for the road department, is there anything in the road department that would serve the animal shelter? Probably not. The ones we replaced old Chevy would be worse than what they had out there. Yeah, right? I, don't, I wouldn't send nothing out there. All right. How, how many miles does the old Chevy have on it? Uh, it's up for about 280 or something like that. Okay. It's way up there. It's been pretty rough. So, <coughs> no. Pretty so, good for a Chevy. Ain't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> ain't too bad. So right now the county can buy stuff that's 20,000 and under. Well, we'll still have to bid, yes. Well, we don't have to, we don't have to bid it under. as long as it's... 20, under 20,000. And it goes, you know, run off your uh, Kelly Blue Book and if it's comparable price, then right. we can buy it. To the state but most. Most people have made ordinances to take that up to 30. Yeah. So if you don't mind writing one of those up, then we can Change get that. It. Yeah. They, they was talking about uh, doing that in the house this past it, session. It, I don't know if it got through or not. It, it, it passed. Did get it through. passed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we talked to Rich Ordstein, and he said yeah. that's the way we can we can even sell the vehicles as long as we sell them at Kelly Blue Book price. Right. We don't have right. to bid without, that out. Without seal, seal yeah. bids. And, uh, that may speed up your process. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, try to find a good deal. Try to keep the price as low as we can. If it's 20, so we can buy it so now. We're well, definitely at, but, but then we're looking for two. Yeah, that's why you that's use that for leverage. Go over. No, that's you buy it's one, gonna go over. and then next month you buy another one. Now, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and and we could also go for through Keiko. They do this reverse yeah, reverse auction the stuff. Same purchase group. Uh, remember, <coughs> no, it was last month. Uh, Scott from Keiko, and I want to say Crawford is his last name. Uh, they do this reverse auctions like they do for salt, but they also do it for pretty much anything uh, county governments could buy. And we could ask him to put this on a reverse auction, <coughs> let him know about different uh, dealerships, and he, he'll contact all those and we'll get the lowest bid. Or the lowest price. The state doesn't turn any pickups in. They're not just flat and, and there, there was a couple down there at the surplus place. There you are. Uh, Do we see anything worth having down there at the surplus? No. I know, uh, I know that's how we ended up with our two tandem dump trucks. Well, no, we was at a different place. I mean, you, but I know where you're talking about. Uh, no, we didn't go down there. I don't know what they've got down there. A guy, Especially uh, if they come from this state barn, we'd right. know the history on them and, and yeah, that's true. get a yes I or no. I run in them, see, see what they've turned in or whatever, and see what's been turned in. There you go. See what we can come up with on that part. And might find two there. Yeah. All right. Can we let him look at them and our next Absolutely. meeting make a decision? And on I think take Ricky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that'd be good. Yeah, take the mechanic and let him look them over. Been working on that one tandem. Just got that dick around in. I might know something about it today. Oh, well. <laughs> See if yeah. it's going to be any good. I don't know. It's going to restore it far. I don't know. Right. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, thanks a lot for the trimming up Gossam Lane and Charlie Purvis <laughs> Road. It looks awfully good down there. Like, really You're appreciate doing it. a good job, Mark. Thank you, Mike. All right. Next up, uh, Andrew Stark with emergency management. Get hot in here. I'm uh, pretty short and sweet. I've um, been working on uh, EOP. I have 
a pocket full, thanks to those cord to get me flash drives to hand out flash drives, EOPs to all the agencies. What what are EOPs? The EOP is the emergency operation plan for the county. Basically, uh, this is the one now. Well, it's not the one now, but it's 2005 when this one was done. So basically, this covers everything. So if um, we have an emergency, this is the guidebook that we follow in the county of what happens and who does what. So we had to update it completely this year. So that's what. Is that one updated right now? Mm -hmm. No, this one's 2005. You want to update? Yeah, that? yeah. I have. Uh, I have to get the. <laughs> I went, I had them get me the binders, but I got to get tabs. That's oh. the one thing I don't have. So the flash drive you're passing out has that same information yeah, on it? Yeah, the flash drive has everything that's in here on here. So what that does is allow me to give it to you and then like um, next the year tree. or the year after, yeah, save a tree. And then I can be like, hey, I need your flash drive back. I'll update it. And then, uh, so they were on $2, so that's pretty cheap <laughs> for an 18 gig. You need a you need a flash drive one more for two dollars a piece. <laughs> um, but the next thing I got to work about work on, um, we had our area four meeting, is our continuity of government and continuity of operations plan. So that's where, say there was a mass disaster and we're in physical court and we all die or we get hurt. What happens? So that's what that plan is for. Is who's going to take over, whose job it is to do what, et cetera. So that's what uh, the next thing I'm starting to work on is going to be. We already have a small plan, but the state wants a bigger, more beefy plan. So, All right. Good deal. That's all I got. All right. Thank you, Andrew. All right. Next up is our EMS director, Will McCoy. like to start off with uh, the uh, the new ambulance is parked out front here um, after the meeting if anyone wants to tour it it'll be uh, open and available for everyone so free rides no free <laughs> rides uh, <laughs> uh, last year in the uh, or last month in the uh, month of July we uh, responded to 111 calls which was up from June by 44 we were very busy. Uh, now that does include non-emergent transports. Um, in the month of July, we also billed out $73,839.02. Um, so far, we've also collected from that $17,744.44. That will continue to be collected over the next several months. But so far, that's what we've gotten. We've responded to, uh, to 620 calls since January. Uh, we're, we're up from last year. So. Uh, there's, a, there's a few things that I bring to the table today. Um, I had a stretcher that broke down, and I need some maintenance on it. It's a little costly. There are two options. Uh, a refurbed computer board for it or a brand new one. They both come with the same warranty, so I would probably recommend the cheaper of the two. Which ambulance was this? Um, the one that's uh, at Greg's right now. One of the older ones? Or? It, it, no, 16. 16. Yeah. But it's the stretcher, Kenny. Oh, it's yeah, the stretcher. So. Um, there's a uh, computer board that's short circuited. So. Not the fault of the wreck, right? No, no, it was not. It was before that. What's what's that on that the travel and labor? They come up they travel up here to work on the stretcher? Yes. Okay. If we buy a new one, there's no travel travel and labor, is it? Yeah, there is. Four hundred dollars. Same thing now. And what's the shipping? They charge us for shipping too? That's yeah. they are if they're traveling up here to work on it. Yeah, they are. Uh, all right. Bring it with them, huh? 
<laughs> do they have to, to program it? Uh, I honestly do not know. Uh, I don't understand that. Well, this before, we paying, before we pay them $400 to travel, I'd like to know what's going on here. Is this the only company that can do it? Uh, there are other companies that can do it. Would you like to get more prices? Yeah, I mean, I, I will say you I will tell you that to run that the person that yes. submitted this this proposal mm -hmm. is a Trimble County resident All right. yeah, and I mean, works at this office in Carrollton. Correct. Right. I've seen his name. I was wondering if I've seen. The, mm -hmm. Is this the striker? Uh, yes, it is a striker stretcher. We and can. The uh, ambulance is down until we do this. Well, it's current. I, it was in one of the other trucks. I swapped around so this. I have three stretchers working with three trucks. The uh, 2016 is currently in the body shop, so um, okay. we're not we're not down a truck by the stretcher as okay. of right now. Okay. And how, how long do we expect that the 2016 <coughs> before it's repaired? Uh, it should be this week. Okay. And that was from pitting the deer, right? Yes. Okay. <coughs> and guys, I would recommend we go ahead and buy the. Uh, the refurbished control board. And I, I'm with you at the four hundred dollar well, four hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah. I don't understand where it either. Where are they traveling from? It says Dayton, Ohio. Is where Dayton, located. Ohio. Is that where they're coming so from? So they must have to go get it from yeah. Dayton. That's that's where their main shop is. I don't know if that's where the parts are. Um, but I know Mr. Davis comes through here uh, on his way home. Right. And that's who would be working on it. We can't. Well, what I'm saying is, can we have this shipped to us? I mean, still traveling and labor. I mean, if he's coming through here, why? What are we doing travel and labor here? And why they didn't put that on the estimate? I don't know. I mean, if they're going to charge. That was, it. that was their estimate. I, I can get other estimates. Well, no, I mean, we do. I like to do business local, but I'd like to know why we're well, we're we're paying four hundred dollars. I can see the labor, but we're, what part of it's the travel? Right. I don't. No, it didn't break that down. So I don't know. Yeah. So this is not life or death right now, right? Not right now. I, I would thing? like for you. I would like for some. Uh, I'd like for you to uh, ask them this: What part of this is labor, and what part of this is travel? Then our next meeting, make a decision on what we what we want to do. Okay. That's when, a, yeah, when will the sixteen be done? This week. And we do have a stretcher for it from one of the older ones that you'll, um, you'll use, is I that what can, you said? I can take one truck down and put a stretcher in it, yes. Okay. So we'll be at three, just like we are now. Yes. It, it, we'll go ahead and get another estimate also, if you don't place, so we can compare. I mean, okay. I, I'm all for doing business local, but, yeah. but still, let's see where he is compared to the other companies. Okay. Um, the... Uh, the other thing was uh, uh, in the uh, previous meetings we had discussed a life pack 15 cardiac monitor. If, um, if you all remember when we did the budget, we were budgeting $85,000 for two of those life pack units. Um, go ahead, Will. Can we get uh, an option to go out for bid for that? Have to be on this. Well, you've told us what it is, but can you repeat what um, the life packs are for? It's a cardiac monitor. It detects people that are having uh, a heart attack. It's just like the uh, machines they hook to you in the hospital. Um, we would transmit that information to the hospital, and then they would make a recommendation as to what hospital you need to go to for proper treatment. And that way, if somebody's having a heart attack, they can take them on to Jewish as opposed to taking them to Carroll County or, or, or LaGrange. It speeds up the process and increases survivability. Thank you, Crystal. Yes, sir. Have a good day. So it's really about public safety. It is. Um, there is an option to also get those machines in a refurbished condition and save quite a bit of money. Okay. And the refurbished does it have the same warranty? Uh, it does come with a uh, with a warranty. Uh, I don't know that it is the same warranty, but they do offer a uh, an annual calibration 
and uh, PM service. This, with and this would be for two? For two, yes. Mm -hmm. right. um, they also, the, the quote that you have right, right there, they also included a CPR device with that, in that quote, two of those. Um, that is huge um, when it comes to uh, uh, EMT safety because it's doing your CPR for you. Yeah. You can be seat belted at that point and not have to be worried about getting thrown around the, the ambulance. In case you hit a deer. <clears throat> yeah. Is there an old one? If you buy these two, would there be an old one to put in the courthouse? We yeah. would have AEDs available. Okay, because I've always wondered why we don't have an AED in the courthouse with all the public, you know, folks coming in with all mm -hmm. the public. And some we've gotten lucky enough that we haven't needed one, but right. we will eventually. So you'll have one to put over there? Yes. With the addition of G's. I know, you know, we budgeted for us. Yeah. 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 And the good news is it's coming down a lot lower. Yeah. Um, you need a so I would ask. I would ask for uh, <coughs> for authority to a motion to advertise. Go ahead and advertise for this, yeah. uh, and you can notify the, the the people that you know that do these things mm -hmm. uh, that that ads in the paper, and and they could uh, um, they could respond to our next regular meeting. I think that's September fifteenth. No, sixteenth. Sixteenth. Yeah. I don't know who wrote those days on there. I'm looking at it wrong. All right, now I see it. 16th. Yeah, 16th. How's that sound to you, Will? You going to make fine. it okay for that? Yep. And uh, you said the 16th. Yeah. And the same way uh, on the stretcher. Yeah, on that computer board for the stretcher. Okay. And so we we have that motion. Kirby, was that you? Yeah. Chris and. And JD seconds it. All right. All those in favor? All right. All right. All right. Will, if I could get with you this afternoon, we'll get that ad wrote up and get her done. Okay. Thank you, Will. Thank you. All right, Sheriff. I'm quick today. I know that's unusual. Uh, nothing big other than tax bills. I think Tina's sending out to have the tax bills prepared, so that's coming up here soon. I know it's everybody's favorite time of the year. Uh, and trick or treat. Trick or treat. Here's your tax bill. You have the little card. You know. Seems like we just got one. Well, you know, <laughs> they come every year. It's like Christmas, right? <laughs> other, other than that, pending your questions, I don't, I don't have much. I don't, I don't have any requests for any money right now. Even better. Which is good, right? <laughs> yeah. It's coming though. Yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> All right. Do y'all have any questions for Sheriff? No. Thanks, Sheriff. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, and is our jailer in the room, or do we have a uh, jailer? Frank, you want to tell us about what's going on with the jailers? I don't have any information. Bobby keeps all that. So. A lot of transports? They need to go, we take them, and they come, we bring them. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and Bruce, if you could talk about solid waste. And before Bruce gets started, uh, I will, the court knows, or uh, make an official notification that our, our current solid waste coordinator, Tina Drake, is going back to teaching school. Uh, she is still finishing up some cases that she's working on and still writing letters and then also I think you guys might have seen this letter in your uh, in your packets uh, I'd like to read that out loud uh, this is from the environment energy and environment cabinet uh, on Wednesday July 10th 2019 I met with Tina Drake to conduct a spot check on Trimble County's 2019 litter abatement grant I want to extend a thank you for having all the requested information available for review. A discussion was held on the county's expenditures and the different ways to expend the litter abatement grant funds. The county is commended on a, doing a, job, a great job with their litter abatement grant and for involving the community by using groups to conduct the litter cleanups. If, if you have any questions, please call. This is from Lisa Evans. She is the grant administrator for uh, the Energy and Environment Cabinet. And I would also like to thank all the groups uh, that come out and picked up trash along the roads uh, for this for this money and for these grants. A lot of people involved to make this happen. All right, Bruce, have at it. Well, I was Todd's talking about that. Uh, she told me, I guess, before she left, that uh, she's done filled out the. I guess it's a litter abatement grant, and it's already been signed and, and took to the state. 
for approval. So she's jumping ahead of the game because it ain't due for a while yet. So uh, the new cell construction out there is about three quarters way through right now. Uh, they're getting ready to start putting the plastic down, welding. Uh, if anybody want to look at it, I took Kenny out there a while back. Just let me know because they want me now to let them know ahead of time. I'm going to be taking somebody out there after I took Kenny out. So don't sneak them in next time. Yeah, I can't right. sneak them in like I did last time. So, uh, courthouse, we had some problems with air conditioning last week, and I had a guy in here working on it. So, if you all get a bill from that, I'm out for you know what's going on. I was talking, I was at home, but I could do with the phone. So, he's supposed to I can come back this week and and finish doing some checking on it, so. Okay. But other than that, I don't have anything if y'all have anything. Are they going to open up a new face out there? Yeah, they got a new, new cell construction going on. Is this going to be connecting into an old one? Same one that's still on. It's the back side of it. Okay, so that would be a pretty good stench of that when they, when they open that up. Yeah, they, they open it up so they can weld the so they got the plastic rolled up, and then once they dig that out, they roll the plastic out, and they weld it to keep the bottom together, and you get a little bit of stink from that. But um, they're doing pretty good putting in new wells out there to eliminate uh, a lot of the stink. So, I mean, you're going to have days it's going to happen, but that's what you get when you have landfill occasionally. With this extra work, What's the life expectancy left of the landfill? Uh, they told me here a while back, we're, at the rate they're getting trash right now, their ex life expectancy is around 27 years. 27 years, okay. At the rate they're getting it right now. But before the curb used to know, it used to be double what it is now, and then the rate drops to 13, 14 years. You know, it just depends on things sure. get trash. Sure. They sure. want it, we want it, because it makes our check better. The county. More tonnage. More, more tonnage. Mm -hmm. But it's been slow for the last few years since they lost that contract down low. So, you know, it is what it is. They bid it every couple of years. They they try to bid on it, but waste underbids them because waste is right there beside, you know, close to Lowell. And uh, when they bid them, they way underbid them. So. The landfill in Louisville was supposed to close 30 years ago when they're still in operation. Mm -hmm. So the 27 years. Be 54. Yeah. They, they could get a variance on the, their elevations and things like that yeah. that could extend it even <coughs> further than that. So. And I also look for, I'm hoping late this year of uh, approximate time for closure of Epperson. They've been talking pretty seriously about it, but we've been hearing about this, what, every five years? No, yeah. Six really. years. So, but they come up and said something to me. So I didn't bring it up to them. So. Maybe that's in the stages of completion, you know, I don't know. Oh, when it does, good. some of it will come down here. I don't know how much, but <coughs> get back game, hey? While we're on that uh, waste management, how do we, of course she got away from us, how do we do Tina's, she was salary. Right. Now we. Yes, we, thank you for bringing that we up. We need to stop. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what I would recommend, guys, <coughs> if we have a new person in, is uh, that we do a little contract with Tina that she can help transition the new person in. And, and she's, she I have, she'd help them I have close to 30, uh, 30 applicants for that job uh, that I've been going over. And I do plan on bringing somebody in the, uh, for interviews uh, at a special <coughs> meeting of the court. And I don't have my calendar in here with me, but uh, because I see your all's days off. You see, you uh, mentioned the right. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would kind of like to do September 9th, uh, just because I know that's the day you're off. You two are off, but Kenny and Kirby. I'm, uh, I work days, so I'd be here in the evening. Oh, that's right. That's right. Because you picked up a day, didn't you? Yes, sir. Um, how, do, how do you all feel about it? Or is there an earlier day? Uh, I don't know. I'm convenient with these guys right here because I just come up the hill. I can ask I'm all pretty flexible. Yes. Okay. Can we talk about that after the meeting? And, sure. and yeah, we, we don't have to schedule that meeting right now, but that, that's the way I kind of like to do that, bring uh, bring so, somebody in right. if you all have any questions. So what, what do you want to put Tina on a contract? Or I put, do. Put I'd like to. In? Yeah, and just turn it out. Salary into the yeah, what's to an hourly rate. 
Yeah. Or 2050, whatever a year is, <clears throat> and pay her that hourly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she's been such a great asset to us, and, and yeah. she's she's worked well with so many uh, of our families that, that needed help. And uh, and I think the next person coming in, whoever that is, they, they're they really going to be leaning on her to get uh, some knowledge and some understanding about uh, how encompassing her job is and how important it is. And, you know, talking about the landfill, 27 years left, $20, I'm just convinced if we did more recycling, we'd have, it would last longer and we'd have less going in that landfill. Because I'd like less in it, not more, if we can do, do such a thing. What number did you come up with? 1923. You come up with the same number, J.D.? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so could I have a motion to uh, yeah. accept make... accept a contract for Tina to pay her 19.23 an hour uh, as a contractor until we have the the next person ready to go? As needed. Yeah, yeah, as needed. Yeah, and she's yeah. got to finish up a couple of cases. Right. So, yeah, I'll make that motion. Thank you, and thank you. We have a motion by Kenny, a second by Chris. Yeah, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All, right. all right. Thank you, guys. All right. Now let's move right along to uh, the truck purchases. And Mike has already left, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, we went down to Larry Stigler's mm -hmm. and just looked over trucks uh, just to try to get some ballpark uh, numbers. And the, a lot of the prices we saw were uh, 21000 to twenty five. Those were four-door uh, pickup trucks, four-wheel drive, long beds. Uh, they had the towing packages on them. Um, and I guess we're just repeating information here. Have they been refurbished or just this is what we've got, this is how they come to us? Yes, yes. 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 they deal with They're on the lot. Work yes. okay. and, uh, and I know I had talked to them about buying, too. And I said, what, what kind of deals do you give us? And they said, well, what's on the window is what we charge. And I said, well, I guess we'll think about it, and we left. Uh, because I wanted to bring it back to the court. What what does the court believe? I definitely want to look for bring on them. Yeah, I agree. And, and <clears throat> because I've not been in this situation when we buy the trucks, do we, and I know we have to be very specific about the package we want, mm -hmm. the, the size of the motor, the... That's if you're putting it out for bid. Right. But if you buy it and you keep under well, the 20, keep it under 20, can we? I think, right. think we can find a good truck for under 20. You run it off Kelly Blue. I'm going to try that, that, but I don't know. And that's what you put with that packet. Now, when that auditor looks at it, we paid this for it. This is right. what Kelly Blue Book said it was worth. We paid at or under. It's got to be at or under. At or under. Okay. And then I don't think you have to do it. <coughs> and that way you can have Mike inspect it, and we don't and get Rick can get him on it. Yeah. And and what we could do is. Uh, we could plan to have that stuff ready for September <coughs> at that meeting too. Right. Yeah. That sound good. That sounds good. All right. Good deal. All right. Uh, then we've already talked about the dog repairs at the animal shelter. Uh, you guys see in here, I have uh, an executive order creating a five-member <coughs> board on the water district, Trimble County Water District Number One. Uh, I have some names that I would like to nominate for uh, that position. I think you need to read the executive order before you... All right, yes. I was looking for it, Kenny, and I got distracted and just Here. left. <laughs> Thank you, Kirby. All right. Uh, this is an executive order to create a five-member board of commissioners for Trimble County Water District Number 1. Whereas Trimble County Water District has been operating with a three-member board of commissioners for an undetermined length of time. I never did find the time, guys, of how long it's been. 1954. 1954. <laughs> Whereas Trimble County Judge Executive Todd Pollock believes that creating a five-member board of commissioners best serves the interest of the residents within the Trimble County Water District, and whereas Trimble County Judge Executive Todd Pollock is within his authority to create a five-member board of commissioners for the Trimble County Water District <coughs> pursuant to KRS 74.0201A. Now, therefore, Trimble County Judge Executive hereby creates a five-member Board of Commissioners for the Trimble County Water District by executive order on the 16th of August, 19, 2019. No, yeah, cheers. Thank you. 
All right. You need it? No, I don't. Currently, the uh, pay for the water commissioners is $500 a month. Uh, I would like to see us set that pay at $300 a month and adding two members, there would be no additional uh, burden on the water company to pay the five members. It would be the same. Well, I could, uh, I've, I've done a lot of research on this. Uh, if they're at 300, they don't have to be required to take training. Initially, they still do, yeah, okay. and, and, I, and I think we don't. ought. To, I think as fiscal court, we we should uh, demand that they take training. Well, that's at you know through the PSC, they don't have to if they're right. at minimum. Right. So what, can we up that to three twenty-five, three fifty? We can. And that will, that will and, require or, them to take training. Or we can do three hundred and still still require it. But if they do the training, they get additional pay. No. It's, if we if we so we choose. just can't. We don't have to. They don't have to be trained taking the minimum. Right. Stipend at 300. They don't have to take training. But I, They're not required to. Right. Through the PSC. Yeah. Yeah. From what I learned. Yes. Yeah. But if we up it and say 325. Right. I know it's. And that puts them in that requirement. That or or we can just say we require it. And I, I think anybody that would get into that position would want to go to. Oh, uh, yeah. Kind of I'd training. like to, you know, because if, if you're not required training, you're probably not going to take training. Right. And I think. Any board or any trainings there, you should take it because you could laws it. change. You yeah. could do it at 300 and add to 25 after they do their training. And there you go. How's that sound to you? Well, that's not me. I just, well, want, I just want them to take training good. if they can. Yeah, I agree. But my question is by going to a five member board, does that lessen their duties and responsibilities? The three that are already there? I think it might divide it up a little bit, give each person a little more uh, to do. <clears throat> And it might lessen the load on, on the other three. Have you had this discussion with those board members? I, I have not. Wayne Wayne Smith was in here and he said at a meeting that he didn't care how many board members was on. And that's what he told us. Did he understand he was gonna take a pay cut at the time? Well I don't I don't know. But he did I heard I heard him miss that. So the first one I'd like to nominate is Dare Smith. Um, Go ahead. We got a, a, our county attorney said that fiscal court is the one that makes these appointments if you do this by executive order. Okay. Do you have some names you'd like to recommend? Uh, I've had one reach out to me, and I thought it'd probably be a good. One. Okay, and, okay. and they do have to be on Trimble County Water. Right. That, on District that, One. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or yeah, Water District One. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to see us open it up to let people apply for it rather than making a quick decision today on this. Okay. All right. And you want to put a deadline? Well, another thing I, well, kind of goes along this lines here. If we appoint somebody now, or we, we're, we're going to, uh, they're going to have to take initial training now. Yes. Then they're going to, have to take it again in January. I mean, well, if there's some available. If, yeah, if there's some yeah. available. There yeah. might not Before be now available. in January. Yeah, there may not be one until January. Right. Uh, and by doing two, you would have to stagger their terms. Their terms, yes. So one would be a three year, one would be two a two year. Two or three in the same year. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's just something we need to think about, all these particulars. And we're going to have one uh, that is up for reappointment at the end of this year. You've got your executive order in place. Can we uh, make our nominees at our next regular meeting? On the uh, 16th of September? That's correct. And that'll give people time and maybe even advertise it that we're going to add two members. And if you're interested, come see Judge Todd Pollock. And if they don't mind, reach out to us so that we at least get to talk to them. You know, How do you feel to. about a social media advertisement to save the money? Some people are not on it, but it's I don't true. care. And I think the word will get out, though. I, I think it needs to be in a local paper. I know okay. there's a cost associated with it, right? But uh, I think that's the proper media, and, and by all means, put it on social media too. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, that's going to be for the regular next regular it'll, meeting. It'll be for the September 16th meeting. All right. And we'll have those 
the group of us. All right, sounds good. All and right. We, okay, all right. And, and for two. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it's that time of year uh, again, guys, to set our tax rates. Uh, currently, they are at 7.8 percent. Uh, in our fiscal year 2018 to 19, uh, this court budgeted $225,000, and we actually brought in $349,000. Uh, I would recommend that we keep the tax rates the same at the 7.8. Yeah, I'll make a motion to keep them at the same rate at 7.8. I know this this only this is only 14% of our budget, so I, I, a change up or down would wouldn't make very much difference. Right. Not going to be not going to be that uh, significant. Yeah. All right, Kenny, is that a motion? Yes. Keep it. All right. Thank you. Do we have a second. Thank you, Chris. And uh, Susan, would you do a roll call vote? The motion on the floor is to keep the tax rates at 7.8% for our personal and real properties. And uh, the motor vehicle is at 8.8, .8 and the watercraft also at 8.8. .8. And, and I would amend my motion to include all those. That. Okay. Right. District one, Chris Slater. Yes. District two, Kenny Green. Yes. District three, Davy Jones. Yes. District four, Kirby Melvin. Yes. Judge Executive Todd Pollock. Yes. All right. Very good. Uh, thank you, guys. And now we will move on to. Uh, we have a little uh, presentation from Charles Liston. He is a research aquatic scientist. He lives here in Trimble County. He has been with the U.S. U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. He's got a bachelor's degree in natural science, a master's degree in zoology, and a PhD in biology aquatic sciences. Uh, if y'all don't know Charles, Charles is uh, a very popular guy around the community and uh, is a great scientist, and we'd like to kind of hear what he's got to say. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for the opportunity. Hello. Can you say that? I've got it all set up, so we'll be able to do it. Uh, this is a topic that, a topic that probably, in my opinion, is going to affect all of us down the road, little counties, big counties, whatever. And uh, it's a topic that people don't like to talk about <laughs> or think about. But it, it's, I think in our planning in the future, it is important. And let me make sure that my computer skills are up to date here, Regina. Mm -hmm. I might have you run this for me. You're good at that. Unless you know. <laughs> okay. Unless you know. Uh, but it, the topic will be uh, about climate change. I sometimes I think about it as, as global heating is what's happening, and we're hearing every time you turn on the news, we're hearing this uh, the same topic. So what is it going to what is it going to mean for our county? And what I this is an abbreviated uh, by the way an abbreviated uh, topic today. Uh, Todd, I'll try to get it done in ten minutes. I know you're all are busy. But uh, I'm trying to bring it back from a global perspective and then bring it into the county. And let's start the slideshow here from the beginning. Okay. Um, I'm Charlie. I work for the Rotary Club uh, free gratis. <laughs> but I, one of my missions is to write, raise the awareness of, of in our organization. We have like 56 clubs in, in this half of Kentucky. I'm trying to get around to most of them to talk about this because our, our organization is starting to grapple with But we're going to talk about global issues and then come down to regional to our county and, and forget about that other stuff. We're going to do that tomorrow, by the way, at 1230 at the library. There'll be an expanded version of this. But let's go on and talk about this uh, problem. I think we can sort of, this one slide kind of tells a lot. Uh, for 800,000 years back, 
uh, we've had carbon dioxide levels in the environment, something less than 300. Well, look at that spike coming up here to 415. That's, that's the latest. We're really pouring it into the, in, into the air. And of course, uh, the culprits are, are a number of things, but fossil fuel use is certainly in there as a big one. So we're, we're, we're way off the scale here. What's that going to mean? Uh, CO2 levels, can you all see that? It's the highest in human history. Thank you. All right. It just surpassed 415 in May this year, uh, and they've been skyrocketing. Uh, in 800,000 years before the Industrial Revolution, the levels didn't surpass 300. Uh, so in the past 20 years, we've seen a rise globally of temperature and it's increasing. What are we going to do about it? The, the, the full consensus now is that, yeah, we are a big part of the problem, humans, and all the use that we do with our energy. Did I get the right one? Yeah. What does that in the air mean? We are having months and months and months of hotter than normal uh, temperatures. Did any of you see that in July was the hottest month ever globally recorded? in the world and it's not it's not the trend is up uh, and basically uh, the, the most climate scientists agree that we are burning too many fossil fuels and what can we do about that I'm gonna bring it back to the county pretty soon but let's we've got uh, uh, right here uh, if you look at the average from 1901 to 2000 here this baseline global temperature differences well it started to creep up here and has really gone up in the past uh, 20 so years and this chart tells a lot right there we're on the way up the trend is there uh, it's no denying it we can get our heads in the sand and say no we don't want to think about it but by golly we have to think about it in my in my opinion and by the way when I say something I always got to preface it by it is my understanding that because I'm not a climate scientist, but I've worked in science my whole life. <clears throat> One of the problems we don't face here is the sea level going up. Now, if you were in Miami Beach, or if you were in Norfolk, Virginia, or if you were in Tampa Bay, or you were in New York City, you would be spending literally millions and millions of dollars right now to attack this. We have got infrastructure, what, trillions of dollars of infrastructure, in our coastal regions, we've all built there, and that's at risk. And the sea levels are not going to go down. They're going to keep going up uh, for the next couple of centuries. So what do we do about it? Well, the Ohio River isn't going to inundate us here, right? We're lucky <laughs> on that test. But it's going to affect us economically everywhere. And you talk about refugees. We haven't seen, we've seen <coughs> only the tip of the iceberg on the refugee situation in Bangladesh and all over the world. We're going to see millions and millions more climate refugees in the next 50 years. Why, why, would, why would they migrate? Away from the coast, they're getting inundated. Okay. Bangladesh is a, is, a, is a good example. They're, they don't know where to go. You think they'd come here? Uh, there will be climate refugees coming. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure of it eventually. But how are we going to deal with that? Now, if you look at the sea level change, <clears throat> Here is what's happening since 1900. This is going up, 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 and it's not going to quit. <clears throat> Just this morning, I watched CNN, and they're talking about Greenland. And Greenland has enough ice on it to raise our global levels 20 some feet if it all if it all melted. It's melting like hell right now. So we've got to think about that, in, in, uh, also. Now, some scientists now are talking about by the year 2100, we're going to see six feet of ocean level increase. What does that mean? <laughs> well, we're not in Miami, right? North Fork, they're going to be swamped. Uh, and basically, low lying coastal cities are most vulnerable, like Florida, Louisiana, and so on. So, we're talking about a land loss of 700,000 square miles by that alone. Now, that's conservative. There are other scientists that say, no, there are tipping points around that we're scared of. Uh, if the western ice sheet from, uh, from Antarctica starts melting worse, Greenland, we're going up more than that. So the problem is, as I misreferred to, that's what is new in the history, is the fact that, uh, this isn't working too well, down here, 
the uh, enormity of the coastal development. We've got trillions of dollars in coastal development, so we're, we're, we're in a problem there. Okay, <clears throat> basically this, this one slide shows a lot about our polar regions. This is the summer mm -hmm. ice content of the, of the Arctic. Uh, you know, in the Arctic, ice forms all winter and then it leaves some in the, in the water and it melts. But now we're having less and less of that. What, what does that do? Ice reflects the sun, keeps us cooler. When we lose ice, we get dark seawater, which is absorbing more and more heat. So this is a feedback mechanism that we don't want. That's happening. Wild weather, we've, we've, we've seen it over right here in the Midwest this year. Uh, we've had drains, droughts, ice storms, and it's getting worse. Uh, even though we've only gone up about a degree in the last 80 years globally, what's going to happen when we go up two degrees or three degrees? Anyway, I'm not going to dwell on that. You've seen the news. We've had a lot of wild weather. And basically, in the Midwest this year, we've had record rainfalls. Now, this could begin to influence Trimble County uh, in the future, more and more. Or maybe it'll be droughts. I don't know. But we're going to see more of this happening. And this is local. And here's our friend farmer from Ohio, Dark County, that's his cornfield, yeah. <laughs> that was this year in June, now that was his cornfield and we saw that all over Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, um, unprecedented flooding and what, folks what's happened, when you heat the air just a little bit, you increase the ability of that air to hold water vapor and then it drops out somewhere more and more. So that's another feedback mechanism that's happening locally. Okay, let's get back to our county here. Purdue is probably doing the best job uh, I've seen around for informing us and predicting us what's going to happen in southern Indiana, which is right across the river. Well, let's stay a little bit of time on this. Is this going to affect us? From 1915 to 2013, we had 27 days with temperatures above 90. By, they predict by 2050, we're going to have 76 to 89 days with temperatures above that. And I may drift off a little bit and say, if we, if we did anything here in the next 20 years, we've got a lot of elderly people in this county, don't we? A lot of elderly people. <coughs> Are, do, we, do we need a cooling station somewhere? Do we need the community center to act as a cooling station in emergency cases? I think we'd probably be thinking about that. In 2080, the hottest day of the year could be as high as 106 to 112. This is based on a large number of models. Uh, the snow on the ground is going to drop to 30 or 34 days a year. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to see minimum temperatures. Now here's what the farmers have to be thinking about. When we get minimum, temp minimal temperatures, uh, they've gone up about 2 degrees. If you get 70 degree nights, Corn doesn't do too well. The warm nights causes soybeans to flip over. So I think we're looking at some agricultural impacts down the road to, that we need to think about. Rainfall, uh, we have had 10 more inches a year in southern Indiana than fell on the average of, t of 1915 to 2010. So that, that means uh, we're probably going to have more and more wet weather coming too. Okay, what about our energy sources? Uh, is coal going by the wayside? Uh, basically, in, in 2008, we, we, we had 48% of our energy our electricity was generated by coal. That's down to about 27% in 2018 and maybe down to 22%. But So that, that part is dropping. Natural gas may not be around for that much longer although it now produces 35% of our electricity and going up. Renewables are cheap. Uh, there's a great movement now for more renewable energy like wind and solar and tremendous number of jobs, by the way, in this growing industry. We're seeing new batteries working. Uh, in Utah, there's a big factory going on that is what we need for renewable energy. We need storage of energy, battery storage. It's not up there what it should be yet. Nuclear? Hey, I never thought I'd support nuclear power. <laughs> but I'm telling you, nuclear power, there are new concepts on board. Uh, there's like 70 companies in this country now working on new nuclear stage four 
They can't melt down. They have different fuels. And the only way, in my opinion, including the renewables, the only way to get enough energy to the world is through, in the future, some of these very modern nuclear systems. China, Russia are way ahead of us on this, by the way. Is it a future for nuclear energy? Yes, uh, the power must get bigger, greener. Uh, all the people in the developing countries of the world, they want what we have. They want, they want what we got. But we can't put up a hundred more coal plants to get it. It ain't going to work. So there are these new nuclear plants, small ones, 50 megawatt, whatever. They can be put in series, and that's coming uh, soon. Hopefully. Uh, anyway, a little pitch for nuclear power in the future. Us and you, what are we going to do? Well, here's a few little things we all of us can think about. Composting, uh, for, you can stop going from the landfills about 650 pounds of U.S. household waste a year. Leave your car at home for two days a week. Uh, cut your greenhouse emissions to much less. The number of electric cars globally, as of January, was about uh, 13,000 and 2000, excuse me, 2009, 2015 was 743,000. And the emissions per vehicle is about half when you look at it that way. Uh, this is very controversial for Trimble County. We raise a lot of cattle, but globally they're talking about switching from meat more into to grains and vegetables because there it would create a great reduction in our emissions. And everybody gets there's electronics here. If you just idle those at night, shut your, shut your bar off, you'll save an awful lot of power. Okay. Oop, too fast, right, Dick? Ah, here's a trend. Electric vehicles in the United States uh, increase an increase of 81% over 2017. It is roaring. It is really coming on big time. So I suspect in 20 years we're all going to be driving a lot of electric, maybe 10. Maybe that whole fleet in the sheriff's department. Is he gone? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, a little, little joke, a few slides to end up with here. Tiny houses are a big trend. We all live in big houses. I love them. We, we take so much energy, but the trend is more and smaller and smaller living conditions as we move towards a more austere environment in the future to combat climate change. <coughs> Who wants to live in a tiny house? Any, any hands going up? <laughs> yeah. Okay, what's the ch what is the challenge then, folks? Well, the Earth has warmed a degree and a half since the late 19th century. Most of that has occurred since 1960. Some of the, some of the Arctic has warmed faster. Uh, some of the Antarctic areas are gotten a little colder, interestingly. But the bottom one is finding a way to stop the emissions and climate change is the greatest challenge for this century. There we are. That picture says it all. Sitting out there in nowhere, a little old beautiful planet. The only thing we got, there's no planet B. We're not going to live on Mars. Uh, what are we going to live to our, leave to our kids? That's what bothered me. I have grandkids. I'm looking at that. I was talking to a friend out here. Uh, we were so lucky. We grew up in the 50s and 60s. Man, what a great time to grow up, right? Now we're going to hand over to our kids a planet in default. Or have a planet that's harmed, how are they going to adapt to it? So I think we all have a stake in this uh, in the future. Now think about that. That picture is amazing. Okay, you all are grappling with so many things. I'm so impressed with everything you all have to work with here. I, I'm learning that too. But look at all these services that uh, might, you might be, you're aware of this. Transportation, parks, housing, education, community, conservation, fire protection mass transit, on and on, agricultural lands, forests. I might say something about forests for a second. There are enough, there's enough land in the world to reforest an area the size of the United States without harming agriculture, without harming cities. It just came out in Science Magazine. So if <coughs> Trimble County were to totally warp itself in forests, we would be doing our job, maybe be leading the way. But there's, these are the things that climate change, in my humble opinion, is going to affect all this. And as we plan, as you all plan, do it within the lens of, of environmental change. How are you going to work things in the future to adapt to it? And if I might get the podium a little bit more, Trimble County, I wrote an article for the paper not long ago that says, 
why can't we become an indicator county? You know, we're, we don't have a railroad, we don't have an expressway, we don't have paved over lots forever, thank goodness, but we have a beautiful, beautiful county. What can we play on? How can we play that out economically? That's the challenge, and we need, in my opinion, we need some futuristic thinking on this, but we need to realize what we got. Now, if, if I had video, these folks would be saying, thank you, from Fiscal Court, you all helped support the pollinator project and that was great these kids are all involved uh, there's your daughter there uh, Ron uh, Bailey's in there but they've got it going out there they got their club and they're going towards this this is this is just an add-on folks about the beauty of our county here's what they're looking for more pollinator and one of the things that my mission is why do we mow so much you go around everywhere everything's mowed down there it supports ants it supports mice it supports mold but look what it could be supporting if we didn't mow so darn much. And we would help nature out. <laughs> if you want to know how, you want to put your little plot in somewhere. Here, I've got all the information, the, the type of plants you need, how big a, a starter, starter habitat. Now, come to the fair, the Rotary Club, and the Fiscal Court. We both sponsored this. Thank you so much. And there it is, the booth today. Uh, we are promoting the natural beauty of Trimble County, and we had a lot of people. I've been down there several times and looking at it. So that is a theme that we do have. We don't have uh, great industry. Uh, one dream would be how can we attract IBM or whatever as a satellite office in the community or whatever, make pe help people working at home, preserve our forests, increase our forests, and become a leader rural county in Kentucky so that would be a nice dream I think I'm, I, I think I'm about done and I thank you so much oh yeah <laughs> remember the song this land is your land Arnold Guthrie well scientists have now concluded that despite Widow Guthrie's best efforts this land was in fact not made for you and me <laughs> okay thank you all right thank you Charlie very well, informative and thank, thank you, you for the opportunity right. Can get rid of that now or yes turn that off that's where the heat's coming from <laughs> okay but Kirby said something about the heat earlier and I thought I feel it too but there's uh, it's coming from that is that hurt well I'm burning up calories here aren't I yes okay. you're adding our global footprint oh well I'm sorry I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody uh, very informative though and it's something we all need to be thinking about yeah and uh, by the way <laughs> It's such a big topic. I only hit the surface. You know, there are so many sub projects. If the car, if the car never wants to hear the other back, we all back. Will Andrew? Yeah. 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 Thanks again. Any questions? All right. Uh, the next gentleman up is Doug Salisbury. Uh, I don't know if you all have heard about uh, ACES, uh, but it is about adverse childhood experiences. And Doug, if you would uh, stand up and talk a little bit about that force and about the the shield outcomes that that go along with helping uh, children well, you need the slide too huh I was getting ready to unplug it on the other side no. I hope it works for you yeah, goes with it. it's three pages yeah come back three pages three pages there's you got the other all three of them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What would you need? I'll just go to my file and get it's his little brochure. One more. Yeah, I've got 
I've got two more for you. There you go. <laughs> I have more copies, Regina, if you want to look at them too. No, I'll, I'll share with Susan. <laughs> yes, yes. It would. I have to open that window for the phone in it. Okay. <laughs> it stays out of it. Yeah. Okay, first of all, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to come and to... All right, court's back in session, guys. Uh, court's back in session. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, I have been in this area for just a little over two years, coming from Columbus, Ohio, and I came here with Signature Health Care. Uh, as a clinical chaplain and uh, uh, a trauma counselor and uh, for several years I have been studying and working on this ACEs phenomenon. The initial test results came out in 1998 and uh, uh, but anyway uh, for the last eight to ten years I've been working on this. After coming here uh, coming from a large metro area into a small town area, it's a whole lot easier to get closer to people. And I have seen the effects of this phenomenon right up close. And uh, for me, it's, it's been a, a real motivational thing to try to help um, in a way that, and of course, Charlie, his is global and universal. Mine is right here, one person to one person. So. Uh, and both are important, but uh, I have a real short, uh, real short explanation. If I can find the cursor there, there we go. Oops, it didn't work. Pardon me? I said there's the mouse in the mouse. Oh, okay. There it comes. No, oh, it's not going to work. Oh, I know why. Does this have audio, Charlie? No. No audio. Okay, I'll never mind on the video. I don't think it does, but... The year is 1985. Right. The location of the Kaiser Permanente Medical Care Program in San Diego. Dr. Vincent Felitti, the medical director of a large program designed to help obese patients lose weight, is facing a puzzling problem. Just when many of his patients have begun to lose a noticeable amount of weight, they drop out of the program. He decides to meet with patients one-on-one -on -one to determine why. The answers are startling. He discovers that many of his patients had been sexually abused as children, and he realizes that for some of his patients, excess eating and weight gain are not simply a matter of lack of control or education, they are in fact a protective mechanism and a way of coping with the bad experiences from their past. After partnering with Dr. Robert Anda at the Centers for Disease Control, Dr. Felitti's investigation was expanded to cover 17,000 largely middle-class adult patients in the Kaiser Permanente system. The survey asked them about their history with 10 different potentially adverse childhood experiences known as ACEs grouped in three categories. Abuse, physical, emotional, sexual. Neglect, physical and emotional. And household dysfunction, mental illness, incarcerated household member, a mother who was treated violently, substance abuse and divorce. For each type of adverse childhood experience, the person was given a point and the points were tallied. 
For instance, a person whose parents were divorced and whose father was incarcerated and suffered from addiction received an ACE score of 3. Again, the researchers could not believe what they found. 67% had at least one ACE. Over 20% had three or more ACEs. 11% experienced five or more categories. The researchers determined that higher ACE scores correlated with an increase in risk for problems like substance abuse, smoking, and depression. And also for physical health problems like cancer, diabetes, stroke, and heart disease. And here's the most surprising part. Adverse childhood experiences make a person more susceptible to adult diseases, regardless of coping behaviors like smoking or substance abuse. Preventing disease, then, goes beyond exercising, eating right, and getting good medical care. It means reducing adverse childhood experiences. So it was really a dramatic finding, and one that they were so prevalent, and two, that they had such a direct impact on uh, outcomes like that. And what exactly causes these ACEs to impact health later in life? Well, we think the mechanism is related to chronic stress and what's now called toxic stress. You know, uh, not all stress is bad, but toxic stress is where it is extreme or persistent um, or severe enough that, that your body it never it recovers from that initial stress response. Biologically, what happens is that we are able to do things in crisis that we're not able to do when we're not in crisis. Um, so all of our uh, muscles, all of our brain chemistry, all of the functioning of the body is always alert. And that puts an incredible amount of stress on the organs, on the psyche, on my ability to think, my ability to concentrate beyond just surviving and managing the crisis. And what we're learning is that there's a lot of chronic illnesses that are related to be living under toxic stress especially domestic violence uh, has been one of the symptoms cited for that. Um, and therefore, when people have uh, immune disorders and when they have chronic pain, a lot of physicians are being invited and encouraged to ask about a history of domestic violence or child abuse. I think the uh, ACES study uh, is a game changer, uh, truly a game changer for Kentucky and for every state. Uh, to me, what the ACEs study does is it puts research and numbers behind common sense. According to the National Survey of Children's Health, more children experience three or more adverse child experiences during their first eight years in Kentucky than any state in the country besides Montana. The cost of not addressing these adverse childhood experiences for early life is huge. Even if you just look at toxic stress and what happens in early school age, again, the kids, they can't attention, maybe because they're suffering toxic stress from their home environment, and those kids are going to fail. They're going to fail grades in school, they're going to drop out of school early. People that never develop this skill of relationships begin to feel isolation, they don't have any close friends, and those are the kids, if you look at the school shootings that have happened around the country, many times that's a factor in those. People desperately need a sense of belonging, and if they don't get that from proper social and emotional development growing up, and those are the kids that seek out gangs later in life. I think the adverse childhood experiences study tells us that risky behaviors like using alcohol, using drugs, particularly IV drug use, you know, those studies indicate that 80% of IV drug use can be attributed to adverse childhood experience. So the importance of working on those early on is really, really critical because obviously we all know that remediation is really, really difficult once children get into those behavior patterns. It's very difficult to turn them around. And once adults are in those behavior patterns, then what do they model for the next generation? In Dr. Felitti's words, improving parenting skills across the nation may well be the most important public health advancement of our time. This program was funded. Okay, uh, I'll just add a couple of uh, comments here that uh, first of all, the ACEs, the effect actually st can start prenatal, depending on the mother's environment, her attitude, her stress level, uh, can affect the baby who is eventually born for the rest of his life. A person who has six ACE factors or higher, statistically, it's been proven that their lifespan is 20 years shorter 
and it's not because of anything in particular, it's just the stress on the physical body uh, from early childhood. Um, coming to this area, the proportion of dementia diseases is a lot higher. Dementia diseases, and there are over 200 different disease, uh, diagnosed diseases that cause dementia. Alzheimer's is the most uh, well-known one, but uh, dementia um, and seven out of the ten uh, causes of death in this country, ten diseases um, take the most Americans' life, seven of those can be directly attributed to ACEs. Um, so they do cause death. Um, another thing, the, uh, in this area we have, uh, from what I understand, a high uh, substance abuse problem. Um, one doctor I spoke with who specializes in addiction said that it is just as normal for an ACE victim to become an addict as it is for anyone to bleed who is stabbed. It's almost a given that ACE victims, because it is a self-medication, trying to get rid of the pain on the inside. Um, so anyway, um, let's see. <clears throat> Changing the fundamental question is not what's wrong with you, which is what most of us have grown up thinking, you know, what's wrong with that guy? He's crazy. Something's wrong with him. To what happened to you? Um, because over 80% uh, of the um, ACE victims have some kind of social stuff going on that is not healthy. Every, and you, as you saw at the, in the video, 66% of all Americans have at least one ACE. So for every three of us in this room, two of us have something in our background. Um, and this is not to point fingers, but it's trying to find some answers. This is a diagram showing the top part, adverse childhood experiences and adverse community environments. If we, and that's the reason I was interested in being here today, because of the community environments, the poverty, discrimination, community disruption, lack of opportunity, economic mobility and social capital, poor housing, violence, uh, quality and affordability of housing. That's where the community leaders can have an impact on developing a whole system of making things better for our citizens and families in this area. Uh, it's very easy to become ace victims uh, childhood when the parents up here at the top part of the diagram are living in the conditions provided in the community down here. The stresses, the frustrations, just the not knowing where to turn or what to do next uh, bring about a lot of the other uh, childhood experiences. Ace Shield uh, uses the self-healing community model <clears throat> developed by various communities across the country which have built strong networks that promoted greater collaboration across different sectors. Uh, across the sectors, I'm talking about health department, um, the courts, law enforcement, um, the uh, social welfare system, the education system, uh, even faith community system. All of these working together. We will encourage local leadership and nurture sector leaders to think about whole systems, not just their part of the system. We will use data to decide how and where to focus efforts and to learn from what is working. We will help to facilitate visible changes to help to instill a real sense of hope in communities that have given up on the prospect of a better world for their children. This package of professional services in the form of instruction and facilitation represent a select group of strategies based on the best available evidence to help prevent child abuse and neglect. Um, the video hinted at it, but Kentucky 
is has the very highest <coughs> rate of child abuse of any state in the country. Uh, and that's just of reported cases. Kentucky has uh, it's 22 percent, whereas the national average is only nine. So we're we have a problem to try to deal with. Oh God, I don't want to interrupt you, sure. but I have to. Do do we have any data that shows Trimble County versus the state? Uh, very little at this point. Uh, Trimble being <coughs> a small county resources have not been available to do studies uh, like some other places have but i will keep trying to find it these are some results from communities using the system over the last 10 to 15 years birth to teen mothers went down 62 percent infant mortality went down 43 percent suicide and suicide attempts went down 98 percent a, a person who has six or more aces, I may have already mentioned this, six or more aces, they're 12 times more likely to commit suicide. 12 times. Uh, youth arrests for violent crime dropped 53%. High school dropout rates decreased 47%. 21% overall improvement in standardized test scores. 75% decline in school violence. Uh, that would help out our uh, school resource officer a lot, I would su suspect. 73% um, decrease in school su suspensions, 10% increase in attendance. Uh, the truancy thing uh, improves. 65% of teachers surveyed report feeling less personal stress on the job. So it's a help to all of our teachers. 100% of teachers surveyed report Students have more focus and are ready to learn. Students seem calmer and more peaceful. 94% of teachers surveyed report specific students whose engagement in school seems to have improved. 10% improvement in test scores in general. 86% reduction in suspensions over two years. 40% reduction in psychological distress, including stress, anxiety, and depression. 65% decrease in violent conf conflict over two years. And in general, improve teacher retention and decrease teacher burnout. A friend of mine who retired from the Columbus school system several years ago, the last five years he taught, he got sick every August before going back to school. Come to find out, he, he told me later, he said, he saw his job the last five years of teaching in the Columbus Public School. Um, it was just a matter of trying to decrease the amount of destruction in the classroom. That's all it was. And it was all because of the ACE factors. <clears throat> Communities determined to raise the standard of living for its residents will trace it situations and system weaknesses causing the problems. Face it, be honest with selves and follow the facts. Erase it, determine to cancel the negative past and fix the future. Replace it with proven methods and true caring for our neighbors. Next steps, uh, I would like to be able to have a public showing of a documentary of a self-healing community. The video is called Paper Tigers, and it shows the huge difference uh, from once the program is instituted. Uh, the community, the school, everyone involved with the program. Uh, and that's where those statistics just came from that I just quoted to you. Number two, community leaders decide to start the program. Number three, established contract with ACE Shield to begin instruction and organizing. And number four, grant writing to help finance the program. And that's it. Any questions? What, what can we do as fiscal court to help bring about a program like that for the county? Uh, probably off the start would be number four. Uh, I have several sources of grants that are out there. In fact, just in the last couple months, Congress just passed a bill 
It's been in Congress for about a year and a half to two years, the opioid bill. With that bill, there was $50 million allocated strictly for ACEs. Um, but I have several sources, state and uh, federal and foundational, that I can pass along. I am not a grant writer, so I, I leave that up to the experts to know how to do all that, that part. Okay. And you, you already work in the schools. Uh, I, I've been in the schools a lot. I do not have a contract with the schools here locally. Um, I don't think I'm talking out of turn, but it, it looks like I will be having a contract in Bullock County. Uh, Steve Miracle is down there now, uh, leaving here. Um, I will not be working with the entire district, however. They already have a program in place. But uh, there, Steve is now the principal of a um, high school, and he has seven school feeder, his feeder system, the elementary and middle schools into the high school. And I'll be working with those eight schools. And then I've also done some teacher orientation for some small uh, private schools this year, just the last month. And uh, good success so far. I think we all recognize the, the importance of finding out what happened mm -hmm. and fixing it. And I appreciate you coming in and, and explaining this to the court. What can we do, guys? You got some ideas of what we can do to help our community? Partly what I would recommend is like the number two is mm -hmm. I could come in and do more detailed <coughs> explanation and different policies and it really it's a whole different way of thinking because our corporal punishment system is actually exacerbating the ACE problem. Hmm. Um, when a teacher in the school sends a student to the principal's office, it's the same thing. The student, because uh, during the ACE experiences of early childhood, the, uh, from birth to two and a half, the brain of a child develops from 20% of the adult brain to 80% in those first two and a half years. That's why the pediatrician always measures the cranium for doctor visits. And, uh, but uh, the, the, what happens is because of the environment that these children are in is so traumatic that their involuntary brain takes over their fight or flight system, which is the very bottom in the middle of the brain, the limbic system. And when that is operating, it's merely for survival. The other part of the brain, the cerebral cortex up here, the frontal cortex, is developing 700 to 1,000 new cells every second for the first two and a half years but they're never used because this poor kid is in crisis all the time that he's merely trying to survive the only way he knows how therefore this part does not develop even though those new cells are being formed all the time they atrophy away that's why these kids have such trouble in school they don't have the brain power to learn like someone who has not experienced aces um, I've got PET scans that show big black spots in the in the child's brain. So it's like Alzheimer's, the big black spot forms. Yes. Hey, have you done this presentation to the school board? Because Not to me, board. I think the school would be the place you would need to start this program at and, and then expand on it from there. They were invited today, but I don't, I don't see anybody. You might um, yeah. Well, try to get on the agenda at the school board and, and yeah. do the presentation and see if they got access to grant writers and, and right. everything you're looking for also. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. <clears throat> and I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we all agree that oh, yeah. this is how important this is mm -hmm. and uh, our willingness to support you in it, uh, whatever, whatever that takes, whatever that looks like. Okay. Good, thank you. All right. Yeah, thanks a lot, though. Thank All right. You. All right.
All right, guys. Uh, I, I see we have a special guest that has come in. It's not on the agenda, but I would like to uh, give him an opportunity to address the court as well. Uh, and that is our Agriculture Commissioner, Ryan Quarles. Hello. Hi, Judge. I was in uh, Northern Kentucky this morning. I'm heading back to the State Fair. My office runs Kentucky State Fair. I just want to pop in and say hello to you Magistrate. and our yeah. magistrates and local officials. Uh, I don't want to take up any of your time because it wasn't on the schedule, but I just want to come by and extend uh, a welcome from my office and let you know if there's anything we can do for you. Uh, I'm from Scott County. Grew up on a tobacco farm and continue to grow Burley, uh, Trimble County. Uh, traditionally, it was a Burley dependent county, and it just isn't what it used to be. And we've done a lot to uh, transition from that. Um, I know that we have uh, six hemp growers in Trimble County this year. Uh, we have a thousand people growing it. I think one of our producers is here, and probably have one processor, yeah. and we approved 346 acres to be grown this year uh, in the county. And so. It may not be a crop for everybody. It may not be a crop for all tobacco farmers, but there are some folks out there taking a risk. My hat's off to you. And there are people in Kentucky making more off hemp than they ever did on tobacco. But there's also some farmers that, that deciding it's not for them. And so particularly in the river counties, we're hoping that this crop kind of takes off because it was once grown here prominently. Uh, we have a, a thousand farmers growing it statewide. Uh, we've approved 62,000 acres. Uh, we're the number one hemp state in America. <coughs> And we expect there to be about a hundred million dollars in in Kentucky hemp derived products in America this year. And so this is this is a real industry. It's employing 500 people beyond the farm gate. So these are farm these are full time jobs that are off the farm processing it in CBD or, or concrete. Uh, we got people making fabrics out of it. We just landed a contract with Pat Patagonia and Walmart as well. And so it's given our small farmers particularly uh, an opportunity to do something a little bit different. Uh, Kentucky Proud continues to be a, a big success story for the Department of Agriculture. 80% you know, of Kentuckians uh, know what that means. And for the first time ever, we're selling Kentucky Proud ground beef in our grocery stores in a significant way. We've sold 420,000 pounds of ground beef and cattle that never left Kentucky. They're bred here, fed here, processed in eastern Kentucky, distributed out of Louisville. So we're trying to be systematic about that as well and support our farmers' markets. You all have a great county fair. Uh, there's about 90 county fairs in Kentucky. Uh, we like to refer to the state fair as kind of one big county fair. Um, if you haven't done so, we encourage you all to apply for a county fair grant. Uh, the applications are due, I think, October 1st. This will be for infrastructure improvements. Uh, we've got about $300,000 allocated um, for those counties that are eligible. I can follow up with you with the details. Make sure you get paperwork in on time. Uh, and the last thing I just want to say is that uh, we do a lot of uh, regulatory services. So there's 60,000 gas pumps in Kentucky, and we, we check them all. And one thing that we're doing right now, at no cost to the taxpayer, is cut down on credit card theft. And unfortunately, there's been a lot of skimmers, people taking credit card identities from our gas pumps. And uh, given the fact that you're on a major interstate, we check these gas pumps more often than, than other areas just to make sure that that we send the message that criminals don't come to Kentucky, and then when we find you, we're gonna put you behind bars. We put nine people behind uh, uh, federal prison walls for stealing about 5,000 credit cards just a couple just a couple of years ago. So it's real, it's happening. Um, so I can be of any help to you all, especially with nuisance weeds, nuisance uh, uh, mosquitoes, <coughs> etc. Just contact the Department of Agriculture. While you're out at the fair, stop by our Trimble County booth. I'll do it. I'll try to come today. You see that picture? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Third, number 38, right at Kenley's. <laughs> you know, we, uh, uh, it's been hot, but usually it's good for the fair. We, we hope to hit 600,000 people uh, between now and, and Sunday. So, if you haven't made a chance to get down there, go. One thing that's different this year, that the concerts are free. You don't have to pay an additional charge. Oak Ridge Boys were there last night. 44th year in a row, Oak Ridge Boys were there. They're the original boy band. <laughs> um, Long hair, but too. they yeah, the beard is <laughs> down there. But um, another thing we've done, we, we've cleaned up the fairgrounds. It's, it's an older facility. Uh, we tore down Cardinal Stadium in the back, to the delight of every UK fan out there. But, um, but that gives us more space for parking expansion as well. So we're trying to do some little things. But uh, I just want to come come by, say hello. I uh, wish our farmers uh, a safe and bountiful 
harvest this year. Good luck with your hemp operation. Uh, I was with Secretary Purdue just a few weeks ago. Uh, when he came to Kentucky to learn about what we're doing here. This hemp really gives us a chance to be first in something instead of last. We're oh, talking about some statistics here. Let's be first in a few things, right? Yeah, I'll ready. Yeah. I'll catch you after. So. Okay. Any questions? Well, thank you for having yeah. yeah. me. Appreciate it. And uh, I think I'll see you all at the Local Issues Conference here pretty soon. Thanks, thanks Judge. Thank appreciate you, it. Thank you. Appreciate you all. I'll leave a couple cards right here if anybody needs to get a hold of them. There you go. Thank you. Back to the fair. <laughs> thanks for <laughs> waiting. <laughs> all right uh and also guys not on the agenda is about the library uh dina do you want to stand up and talk about that really quickly i you know i don't want to take your time i know there's lots of people here to to make some comments and i will hurry through this by law the library director has to address the fiscal fiscal court at least once a year and present our tax rates and budget um, so on behalf of the Board of Trustees I would like to present those to you today so um, we're proud to say that we've reduced our taxes a little bit so that's a good that's a good thing for real property um, taxes were um, set for 11.8 cents per hundred Personal property is going to be 12.91 cents per hundred. That's down two cents from last year. And motor, motor vehicle uh, rates are four, four cents per hundred. So um, we're expecting to bring in roughly, based on those rates, we're going to be bringing in about $630,000 in tax revenue. Combined with other revenues, we're, we're expecting to bring in about $660,000 this year. Um, and there, our budget is on our, our website. Um, all of our financial in, uh, uh, information is, is on our, anytime you have any questions about what our budget is or, or finances are, it's on there. Um, we had a carryover from last year for about $1.2 million. Um, per um, the state, we, are, we try to keep uh, one year of um, operating expenses on, on uh, in the bank we also have two other accounts that are set aside for emergencies uh, and we also have a building account for re renovations and building so um, we have approximately about 1.8 1 million eight hundred sixty thousand dollars to appropriate this this next year um, we appropriated about the six hundred sixty thousand dollars over personnel operations administration capital outlay and debt service we actually are the, the building library building has actually been paid off so we're really proud of that we don't have any debt there so um we're projected to expend the the to, to uh spend the full hundred six six thousand six hundred or six six thousand sixty dollars six hundred thousand sixty dollars um that we're expected to bring in and um we don't have any building projects this uh, expected this year so um, we are wanting to look into getting a bookmobile for the outer regions we also started um, this next week a computer lab will be starting at the Milton City Hall building um, there will be two computers there and uh, community members will be able to access uh, wireless internet on the outside of the building as well so we're hoping to expand services that way. So if you guys have any questions about our budget this year or tax rates. No, no. Okay. If you guys have anything, any questions or concerns, my, my uh, door is always open and so you can give me a call. And, and if, if you guys notice, they have a new sign out there at the library. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are events going on all the time. And uh, I think Dina and her staff really should be commended for a job well done and continuing to do in our community. I was going to talk about that, but I didn't want to take more time. So. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> but, but yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you very support. much. Uh, all right, guys, the, the next one is a uh, lady by the name of Melissa Jurgis. Did I pronounce your name right, Melissa? Yes. Yes. I did? Yes. Uh, she is okay. looking to uh, divide a piece of land and uh, Melissa, did you want to talk about it? Well, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry I only brought, I think I want to pass okay. those around. Uh, 
um, we purchased a piece of land on the corner of Ashton and 421. It is on sewer and um, water. So I've already contacted Shelby Energy yeah. and I've already con contacted Milton Water. And they both have written me letters saying that they have the capacity to support dividing that into three lots. Um, so all the land that's around that is divided into small lots. So it wouldn't be anything that's out of the norm in that area. And you've already cleaned up a lot. You've already started yes. a foundation on the one. Well, yeah, that's the one next to it. Yeah. yeah. So. And Melissa, we wouldn't need to add a street. No, there's nothing that's going to affect the county. There's not right. going to be anything added. I mean, if the expense would come at us to run the piping, you tie know, for the, the water, to tie, tie on the water in the, the sewer, sewer, right? There's and no of effect. Electric, it's right, all there. Right. Just increase the tax base. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd be paying for three houses versus one. You mm -hmm. know. Two lanes off of Ashton and one off of the existing. Correct. Wesley. Correct. So one be off 421, then you come into Heatherbrook, then that's where. Right. You're right. One would come off of Heatherbrook, and it would come off of Wesley Drive, where there's a modular there, and there's a stick built house under construction right now, mm -hmm. and that would be the one there on Wesley, and then there would be two coming off of Ashton Lane. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing no, no, nothing off the main highway, so it wouldn't be any new new encroachments. Yes, off no. the right. Yeah. Just the two encroachments on Ashton Lane, and I believe Mike can go look at them, see if they need dish. What kind of culverts? But I think right. that is. Dish I actually had him go out and do the one. Perfect. He's already. Oh, I'm sorry to do the one on the other one, and I he actually and I told him and, he, and you know I had him go out to look because I had already talked to Mr. Pollock, and I was like I want to make sure that we do it. You know, however it needs to be, whatever size culvert you require, whatever needs to be done, we will comply with that. Yes. I thought I made four copies of that. I guess it's I okay. Oh, I've really. seen it. I'm so yeah, sorry. I've seen it. I thought I made <clears throat> five, you know. But So, so the one longer lot, it, it's not going to have a drive onto 421. No, no. Right. Oh, there's a Heather yeah. There's that That's little like Wesley that. Drive, Kenny, that it's coming in off of. And we'll make sure that you know that, uh, and you all can, um, yeah. you know. That, yeah. Well, here's but here's, here's your Heather Brook in, in here, that little turn right there. It goes there. down this road. There's two houses here. Yeah. And yeah. We go right, right into that third house. And like I said, we don't have a problem with y'all making stipulations as far as, I mean, we're at your mercy, but I'm saying if you wanted to say we want the county to, you know, tell us whatever and, you know, us to comply, whatever we need to do, we will. <coughs> you uh, do know the one coming off the Heatherbrook is not a county road? I do. Okay. I do. But you're basically putting a driveway in there. I am, and I will make sure that whatever needs to be to make it, in the event that later it did come, I would make sure that the asphalt was, whatever you all tell me to do, I will make sure. Okay. What's the lot number on this? Well, um, I don't think it was included in the original. It's not. It's not part days. of Heatherbrook. It right. is. It's just a separate piece of land. Um, but when Mr. Roberts did it, he just went on and put the three lot numbers continuing on. If it was, you know, but it's not really part of Heatherbrook. So there's no deed restrictions. I know Heatherbrook had some deed yes. restrictions. I don't know if they're all being followed. None of them are being followed. I know. Exactly. Believe me, I wish they were. Yeah. But no, they're not. Yeah, I wish that there would be a HOA and they would follow it. And you know, we try to keep our area clean, you know, and because um, um, we have five houses on the back on Brandon, and we try really hard to keep them clean. And um, so, and we've got a duplex. Well, if you got the five houses, you could do an HOA. I've thought about it. I'm telling you, if we got these, I'm telling you, I've thought about it. So everybody would make well, sure that they cleaned it up and know. do what uh, they're supposed to do. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because we would have controlling, you know, because it would be nice if people would mow and clean up and maintenance and not have trash piled up and 
I think there's two vacant houses there too on the other side. Yeah. And our subdivision regulations. Yeah. But you can. Yes, we can. Yeah, we can yeah, change we have, that yeah, with, yeah. with the court's approval. We can let her do this. Now, I don't see anything wrong with it because it has water, sewer, and electric. It is not affecting our, our county road system at all. It would just add more people to more the district. Homes. Yeah, three new homes. And they are going to be stick they built. Be they won't be modular. Not that I'm knocking on modular at all. I'm just saying that, you know, I know that sometimes that they, they I wish they would build them stronger and sturdier and with you know nice faucets and you know and and because i see a lot of people will tell me they'll go in later and you know and i don't know now what they're being but 20 years ago you know they had substandard piping and yeah. faucets and you know and so it you know but and they all we use all licensed kind you know like <coughs> electricians plumbers heating and air we don't you know in the houses you're talking about like 1,100 square feet, aren't they? They're 1,100 square, square feet, 1,200 feet. square feet, 11 and 1,200 square feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know what's that. I think it'd be all right. We just took around a variance off the. Yep, so off the subdivision ordinance. Yeah. And I would say let's go ahead and do this for them, guys. I do too. All right. Is that a motion, this, J.D.? This is that being recorded in the courthouse? Yeah. yeah. And Mr. Yeah. Robertson and it, and it will be, take care of it. Yeah, he'll like be bringing, we have a license he'll be survey and he will record it and it will be done. And, and I knew it was coming. I just wanted to make sure I got fiscal court approval on this one uh, because our minimum in the subdivision regulations does call for a minimum size of one acre lot. Right. And you're going to have entrances both sides. Each lot. Right. And then that one's a county road. And I know it's straight, so we have plenty of vision both ways. Yeah, yeah. You make that motion, JD. I'll make that motion. All right. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Thank you, Kirby. Any more discussion about it, guys? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? No. Okay. All right. How about that, Melissa? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your patience with us. No, I appreciate it. I learned a lot today. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'll give this back to you, Melissa, because I'm sure he'll be, Neil will be bringing this in. You can have it. I'm sure Neil will be bringing yeah, that in. Thank you. Yeah, he'll bring him in to, like, Kyle's uh, And, yeah, the next thing, guys, you see that letter in there from the uh, football team, Trimble County Junior and Senior High Football. Uh, they've asked us if, asked me if, if I would ask Fish and Court if we wanted to do a banner on the fence. And uh, just in a little short time, Kirby and I were talking, uh, and I think it's a great idea that if each of us would pay 50 bucks, that'll cover the $250. And uh, mm -hmm. then we'll get a banner up there showing our support for the football program. I'll, I'll put that in the form of a motion. Thank you. Each of the members. Contribute fifty dollars. Only have fifty bucks. Yeah, and I and I'll get with Amanda Abbott. Uh, she's the one who was talking to me about this, right. and see how soon they need the money. I, I think the deadline was like Friday, but I'm sure okay. they'll. If they, if yeah, we get she another knew. one, I'm sure we'll get another. Yeah, yeah she I'll, knew we'd had meeting today. I'll second that. All right, and any discussion on it, guys? My name's above Kirby's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go by district, right? Yeah, we we'll oh, go districts. Yeah, yeah we're gonna go districts. I don't know. It's a good thing. I mean, our yeah. football. It's it's good to have football. I think, our, I think our kids need it. Cheerleaders, band, Man, everybody ball does. players. I think, I think and the citizens just yes. say from the mm. fiscal court. Yeah, yeah I was just yeah. making a joke. Uh, yeah. So we're all going <laughs> Sorry, make sometimes. Yep. Yeah. All right. And we all uh, agree. All right. Yeah. Yes, we all do. Yeah. All right. Uh, the, the next thing, guys, is about this gazebo for the Masonic Lodge. And uh, Russell, do you want to talk about that? I, I don't see our other uh, member from the lodge present that was going to come talk about it, but you know a lot about it. Well, I know a little bit about it. What what our approach is and what our desire is is on the courthouse square on the southwest corner where you come up off of 421 from Camelsburg. Masonic Lodge here at Bedford, Milford 158, we would like to construct a structure to honor all branches of service. And we're asking the fiscal court for permission to do that. And we're asking them to furnish the concrete for the pad and we will do the rest. And all, all six flags will be displayed there. It's 
we think it would add to our county. When people come by, tourists come by, they can see that we actually are patriotic and we thank a lot of our veterans. And that's why we're all here today, because we have veterans. Thank you. The question before has always been the size of this. Yeah. You know, we don't want something, you know, we all support the veterans, but we don't want something that's going to take away from the courthouse itself. And I got it. Yeah, I got it. Okay, go ahead. Ken. And I know the structure they was talking about moving is humongous and it's just way too big for that area. That is by the wayside and the one we're currently looking to put there. It's either 12 or 14 by 6. It was. Well, I got a. It's a lot. About half. Of it. Somebody asked me about it. And, I don't know my thoughts on They said 12 foot at the biggest. 12 largest. foot, yeah. Is it going to be a gazebo or is it going to be like something like over Madison, a four cornered? Well, actually, we're looking at a six sided structure to build on that. Gazebo. Gazebo, gazebo. gazebo style. Gazebo. Yes, sir. All right. Question. Is that fitting with the uh, present monument that's there? There's the eagle with all, yes. the, all the four different. It's going to be on the other side. That, yes, it will be on the opposite side. Does that work together okay? Oh yeah, I think more for the veterans is better than. Yeah, and as long as we can find an area that we're not taking out any trees or no. anything like that. No. And it's gonna be new construction. Man. It's totally it's brand new, new construction. Brand new construction. Fiscal court will put the concrete down. We'll put the building up, and we'll maintain it and take care of it. And we what did we give historical society two thousand, didn't we? Yeah. You know how much concrete and I don't is. Know how much it is. And the concrete, I had reached out to the guy who did our sidewalk repairs, uh -huh. and he said he'd have an estimate for me, but he hasn't got that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to let the lodge know and let fiscal court know about the cost. Of what the color is it going to be? Going to be brown? Kind of blend in with the color of the courthouse? That's going to be, yes. Wood, wood, wood color. Wood color? Okay. Yes. How tall? I mean, I'm just asking questions. It's going to be like eight foot. Yeah, it? I think eight. I think eight, yeah. eight foot into well, the tall about? at the top. No. Well, no. Was the it wall, the wall well, height. Yeah, it's okay for me. Yeah, it would oh, be okay. Six sides. Yeah, it's yeah, gonna be like five feet. Good. Yeah. Like fifteen yeah. foot. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Is there gonna be flag poles? Or? Uh, we're gonna put flags on it, aren't we? We'll hang flags from it on all six sides. That's oh. our. That's our goal. What about lighting? Uh, solar lighting on the flags? We we can do that. Yeah, put them on the roof and shine them on the flags. Metal or metal asphalt shingles. Metal roof. Oh, metal roof. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you're talking right back up here by the coffee tree. Up on the corner. Yeah, right. yeah. But not take out the coffee Without tree. It, right. right. No. We'll watch the roots of the coffee tree. I believe you know. It's right. not going to affect anything that's currently It's there. Position. That's right. Well, guys, I'm all in for supporting the veterans. I am too. I, and I think 12 foot's a lot better than this 28 foot 28 structure foot, that we yeah. have to look at. And the concrete we were looking at was like about a 14 foot circle. To go around. It's not going to connect the sidewalk, right? No. It, it could if y'all want yeah, to connect it. No, I mean, it's actually not, actually not yeah. a bad idea. Just for our handicap. Better. Yeah. Make, a, make sure it's not a step up to it. Mm -hmm. And make sure it's a four foot wide. Yeah. Handicap accessible. Yeah. yeah, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to come off of our, one of our sidewalks. One there's the old country store maybe, because if you come this way, you'll be coming further. The, tree, the, one, yeah. the, one, the one going out that yeah. way. Yeah, one on the south end. It's connected, it's connected to the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So, how much we think that's going to be? Under five? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your calculate your concrete there. Uh, Kenny, can you give us a rough, would it be under five grand? Oh, yeah. Should be. Okay. Concrete's about hundred dollars. Twelve by what? It shouldn't take twelve by what? Eight ten yards. Well, it should be at least six inches <coughs> slab. Okay. Because we're gonna anchor this, the building to the slab. Yeah. You yeah. building the building or are you buying? We are going to build, build it. it. Okay. Lodge members get together and make it happen. All right. Yeah. Got my phone. Why don't we give a we give them two for that? You got an idea there, JD? No, it's damn iPhone. Never mind. <laughs> Maybe change phones. All right. But I would say it would be under five thousand. Do we you know. want to put a cap on that? Say mm -hmm. okay, we will approve up to this much money for concrete. We give two thousand to we the give 
two thousand for historical site. I'm sure back in the day they get some for the rotary out front. I'm not aware of how much. I know you're putting the concrete on us, but if we reach out to the local concrete company, see they what they donate. Give us a break on the price of the concrete. If we if we say we're we're going to support you with the concrete, can we let you know? I mean, by the next special meeting, how much? That'd be what? fine if you want if you want to table this till next month. Get some we'll figures get out figures and get it together. Yeah, that would be great. We would like to get it done this fall. Yeah, yeah. You know, we don't want to put this off to spring. Well, go ahead and plan your plan your building. I think. Well, well if we got the slab like, down, brother, we're going to get a truck. Go ahead and plan, plan it down. Let, let us know the dimensions and everything at the yeah. next one at the special meeting. Okay. okay. Now we're going with concrete over to the sidewalk now. That's okay. fine. Yeah. Put September 9th. Our, our our request is for a concrete pad to set the building on. We okay. anchor it too. Right. So if, if we all want to do more than that, we that's on you. Handicap. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now I understand the handicap side. Yeah. 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 So if we do do a six-sided, twelve-foot, the building you're you're going to build the building to fit that. Set it on that. Yeah. You want fourteen? It ought to be fourteen, so you got a foot around it all the way. Okay, on a twelve-foot structure. Right. Right. Okay. And be flush with the ground, right? I yes. Mean, you don't want it. We don't want slab to elevated. Up. You want it flush with the ground and right. come off. Something when we mow around. Yeah. That sounds about much better. Yeah. yeah I make most of we we oh, we table this until our special <laughs> meeting when <laughs> we get to the final dimensions and everything. But in the, in that <laughs> table, I want to go really say we're going to go ahead and <laughs> approve them before they can go ahead and start their building yeah. and get their ideas. But just let us know what it actually is. We figure it up go from there and you'll be ready to roll. Is this a prefab building? No, sir. You're all, so you all are going to... We're going to put it together. You're we're just going to go buy the lumber yes, and build it to fit. So if we're... Correct. We're okay. Yeah. Probably mm -hmm. be looking for some expertise on that, Kenny. You know, I'm just, <laughs> just thinking, you know, how accurate we have to be on the concrete. I mean, if... Well, we want it within a half an inch. Well... Max. Yeah, I used to work for said a sixteenth of an inch because that's the width of a pencil. Hmm. He's a good man. As long as you put that enough tolerances, it'll be all right. All, all right. right, we can we, we, we use that. Let's, let's do that. Yeah. All right. So, what was that a motion, Chris? Motion to have mm -hmm. you know the masons where they go ahead and proceed, but to table the money part of it where we can know where we're getting to the find out time. what we're going to cost. What's yeah. going to cost fiscal court for the concrete? For when they can come back with here's what it's going to be, and we'll say yeah. yes at that okay. point. Or, Good. Know, other than sitting here and putting a cap on something and really not have a dimension to right. do with. So. All right. Yes, that's second. your second JD. Yeah. All right. And all those in favor? All right. All right. All right. Good deal. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. All right. Uh, now let's go with magistrate reports. You all got anything you'd like to talk about? Well, just the, <laughs> the IT. How we uh, how we doing on that? Have we got us a company yet? Uh, the last company that, that we spoke to was Advanced Global Communications, and Crystal has looked over their service agreement mm -hmm. and has reached out to the uh, point of contact individual. And she had not, uh, by this morning, she had not heard back from that person. As you see, she made copies of things for us all to, you know, to look at and consider. Uh, and as soon as she hears back from that person, uh, see, I guess like a back and forth on it. Okay. I, I know our fiscal soft, we've got updates that we need. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they've said we, we've we got to get some IT work done, servers mm -hmm. or something. There's a deadline for them to have it done. Uh, we need it. Well, we need it yesterday, yeah. don't we? Yeah. Yeah, and she told me, just in brief this morning, that there was a... They're in, they want a two-year contract. Right, and we don't have to do that. All right. I, in fact, I would think we would do one year at a time. That's what I would, I would yeah. think. And, you know. and take a look at it. And I don't think they'll have issue with that. Well, uh, I, I, we just wait till we hear back from Crystal on this. And let's again. let's go to the ninth on that one too. All right. Uh, Definitely do something tonight. Yeah. And I, I understand that they they uh, do other county governments as well. Yes, yeah. they, they're it's involved with uh, Spencer County, Shelby County, the City of Lagrange, Oldham County, yeah. uh, and do a lot of a lot of good work, from what I hear from those other communities. Right. We doing this our next meeting. And yeah, 16th. the uh, we can do it on the 9th or the 16th. 
soon as it's better. Yeah, 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 I think it's the 19th. Yeah, as soon as it's better. Get it done. Yeah, we can do it. It's gone on too long. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Kenny? Good. Okay. And, uh, Chris? I got a question about the time clocks. We'll use okay. like, the leg coincide yes. with this. Yes, yeah, they'll be able to get all them. So we got them all ready server. and set up and ready to go. Yep, they're all installed and up and ready. And uh, yes, we just need them wired into our computers. No, I don't have nothing else other than, you know, some community events I know coming up. Uh, Milton Fish Fry is the first of every month, but this month you're going to be at Apple Festival instead of Milton. So then the Milton City Commission, they're having their Customer Appreciation Day, September 19th, if anybody's interested in that. So just a few things around. Did you say anything about the Bedford Bash coming up? Yeah, Friday? Bedford Bash Friday. is Friday night. Friday night. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're having the yep. car show back this year, correct? Pardon? They're having the car, the car show back this year, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, big, big times. All right. All right, Kirby. I'm fine. Right All right, let's move right into public comment. Anybody that's got anything to say, uh, now is the time to say. All right, Tina, go ahead. Um, I wanted to ask, we have three handicap ramps around the courthouse where everybody parks. <clears throat> on court days and on busy days, people don't pay attention to that and they just park right in front of them. I was wondering if we could get some yellow paint and put at the base of those where people won't hopefully pull up there and block where a person can. Are, are there areas that are marked handicap parking close to them? There is on the front side of the courthouse. But not on this side. And then my side has the ramp for them to come up. Right. And there's a, a ramped spot for them to come up from the street level. And there's always somebody that's parked Park in that anyway. area. So maybe some handicapped parking signs? Oh, that would be great. I, right. think, I don't yeah. think that's a problem, is it, guys? Well, yeah. Possibly some striping in front of those yeah. to, to where allow for more room. Because there's one here and then one in the front and then one on the side over here. All right. So. Okay. That'll work. Like we can do that. Let's get that. All right. The whole parking spot is welcome. Then we can ask our local sheriff here to enforce some citations. Good. Yeah. Some parking <laughs> tickets. <laughs> What's he doing sitting down? <laughs> yeah. All right. Anybody else have anything they want to offer the court? Please stand up. Me? Yes, please. <laughs> I want to know why. This is too old, guys. I'm afraid you don't yes, know. let me. See. How come were those that voted in the last planning and zoning county election a mock election? Do you remember? Yes, 2001 or two. How come we're not all in jail today sitting somewhere serving times if it was illegal? When? Magistrate out of District 1 at that time, which was Wechter, is the one that suggested it and said let the, that he thought the people should decide. District uh, 3, which would have been my magistrate, Barnes, agreed with it. Stark out of District 4 said take it to the people, and which they would stay with and they would vote whether people wanted. But I think if, you know, however you decided, if you, if you campaigned on it, then you need to stick with the word because, you know, if a, a man is as good as his word is the way I look at it. You'd like to see a vote? I certainly would like to see a county vote. I, I'm a fair person. We don't know. Listen, they came out of the cracks of the woodwork last election, if, sure. if you all remember. Sure. So yeah, that's my request. That's that what I've got to say. Make it fair. And I, I think. And whichever way it goes, way. I don't care. I'm going to still go on living until the undertaker takes me under. <laughs> <laughs> and if she does come back legally, and I'm saying yes, yeah, so I, I don't disagree with her. But if the if the state says we cannot, uh, yeah, I, I really don't know how we could. But but I, I I'm all for it. Believe me, because I wanted But if it it's a mock election, Perry Arnold is the one that said, and okay. I, I, out of the last, Perry Arnold was the one that said, we can call it a beauty a contest, election. a popularity contest, we can call it whatever we want, it's not binding. Okay. Fiscal court would still have the say. So how is that illegal? I mean, we would all be in jail or in court if we committed a crime, wouldn't we? And that is the big question. What would it what would it cost? Well we're having a general election coming up. Just put it on the ballot. 
And that's that's a probably a no go, isn't it, Dina? Um, the attorney general says that you can't have an election on that topic. It's attorney general's opinion. I'm not an attorney. It would overturn <laughs> every planning and zoning in the state. That's why they don't want it on the ballot because it would overturn every one of them. How did we have it the last time? It was on the ballot. It was supposed to be. Yeah, I and, think, I, and I don't I think know how they, they were they, unaware they that. Through. Well, wouldn't our county attorney have known and the clerk at that time? I would imagine. But, but it may have changed too soon. It may have changed since well, then. Well, except whatever. Charlie's <laughs> sitting here next to me. I'm not going to. <laughs> 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 Do you think there's a reason he's sitting next to me? It could be. <laughs> That's it, the rowdy woman. How much would it cost, Tina? For a special election? No, 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 no. Just when they're having the general election to add that to the ballot. Well, it wouldn't cost anything because okay. it would be a question that would be added. It's just. Um, so, no cost. The Attorney General's opinion, which is considered law, um, says you can't. That's our that's our holdup. Well, I mean, like she says, can we, can we ask him? And it, it holds no value except for. To the opinion of this fiscal court. Yeah, we can we can ask for another attorney general's opinion. But does it have to be called something else or similar to that? It can't it can't be called planning and zoning, right? How about say, do you support or not support? Not actually voting on it. I don't know. I don't know how you would have to word it. Yeah, I agree. But the reason that it was brought up the last time, which was in 1999. Uh, was for the magistrates and judge to get like a full because this is what we're battling. You know, they're saying, well, he's saying that one, my district wants it, and this one's saying, well, mine does it. Well, you know, this gives a more accurate vote. Right. I mean, I'll sit up at the gym for free, you know, and just sit and people come up and stick a vote in the box. I don't care. Just it take the monkey off their back anyway. Mm -hmm. And it would be a great way to see what the people think. Yes. Yeah. We're elected by we the people. Yeah. That's Not right. for the people. We the people are elected. That's right. All right. They say a lot of people have changed their mind in my district. They were strongly against it. If they've changed their mind, I would sure like to know. Well, exactly. So, like I said, if, it, if we can put it on there, I would support that 100%. Thank you. All right. So, uh, Fiscal court, I'll reach out to the attorney general, ask for another opinion on this. Just don't get us thrown in jail. And and state us and state the reason is because this is a very hot, uh, hot button item for our community, and I think we we are uh, at least there's loud voices for it, there's loud voices against it, but I, I think our jobs is to represent all the voices, and uh, and I think a vote would encourage more more public participation in this process as as we move forward how do y'all feel well i think it would i don't think we need to change our course because of the upcoming vote we've got a plan to work on it we need to stick with what we're doing right yeah the commission and meets on the 27th of august and so i think we're, I, I think say we we're looking for a my consensus is, after talking to some of the board members, we're looking for a compromise to a plan that will work for all of Trumbull County. And maybe well, his own that was, ordinance. Yeah, and, and, and the plan definitely has to be reworked. Well, definitely has to be I know reworked. There were some concerns why it was tabled last time at their special meeting. You know, I think they're going to be addressed on the 27th. Yeah. And and uh, I've already started that process. Yeah, so. looked over a lot of uh, information about. Uh, yeah, we're looking different things there's to be uh, different. There's going to be different uh, water subsections down. and stuff that are going to be addressed at that meeting. Yeah, and that was that was the that was physical courts. That's what we said. That's what we requested at the last meeting. Yeah, and, you know, and it is on table. All right, uh, anyone else? Anybody at all? Go ahead, Lance. Uh, this is Lance Hall, everybody. Yeah, I'm Lance Hall. Um, I'm here really representing my mother. Um, who's Hardy Creek District? Uh, JD, I think. Well, it's Blitz. Which, which, uh, yeah. um, we're on the, where the Black Dog ends. 
Um, yeah. On, not on Welty's side, the opposite. Is that you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, which you. which one? Bobby Hall's. Yeah, farm. you're the very last farm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been with Todd for the past. We're going to push a year now, probably. <laughs> uh, trying to get county water. Yeah. Um, the finger keeps getting back and forth. Whose job it is? Um, I've been in Carroll County more than here. This is really my first time here, uh, just because I was directed there at first. Um, I've turned in paperwork for them uh, because it's a West Carroll water line that is within 2,600 feet of our farm. Um, so I've been there, um, presented all the paperwork to apply for a grant, which was block grant. Community development block grant. Yes. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the deadline wasn't met because they didn't do their part. Um, I asked that in the meeting why last time we missed it. I couldn't get an answer. Um, that's when they pointed the finger back to you, saying that it's in your county, you must apply for the grant. All the work has to start January, February, he said. Um, so I'm just asking for help to try to get this project going. Um, I've been to the water company here. The closest place for it is on Barry Welty's farm, uh, which is, it's it's over 5,000 feet. Um, Long way down the hill. Yes. My opinion, I'd rather buy my water because I mean, I'm looking to possibly move up there if we can get county water. Um, I'm currently in Henry County. But uh, I would rather buy the water from the county we're in. Um, I even spoke with Carrollton about, they called it a master meter. They would come down, put a master meter on their line, then Trimble County can buy it from them, I guess is how that works. And Trimble, <coughs> Trimble County can run the line to us. And then it's Trimble County's line. Um, that's an option. I think they do that out on King's Ridge, don't they? I think so. I think they got Where a master meter care. out there. Yeah. Somewhere. Uh, and out on its building too. Right. Cause Cause they I've even talked with Welty about trying to get an easement um, through their farm. They currently have an easement from Cutshaw back to I think they've divided their farm three ways, um, so they had an easement put in, water line put in. Um, kind of a mixed bag there as far as giving an easement. I mean, I don't blame him, it's his property. Um, but I mean, I was willing to give the easement, run the line the 5,000 feet myself because we've been 15 years trying to get county water. Um, and it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if we went the route of the master meter, would you be willing to run the line? <clears throat> well, I went that option. The only thing is, that way there is, I think we have six people to hook to that. Okay. That's not considered a private line. Right. Uh, right. Then you get into the whole state thing. Uh, PSC. Yes. And I mean, I'm not going to be the prick that digs past your property and says, no, you can't hook to it. Sorry. <laughs> right. Right. You know. Um, and that's, that's my thing, you know. They originally said it's a hundred and thirty two thousand dollar project. I'm familiar with construction. To do twenty six hundred foot of line, I don't know whose money that pocket's going in, but that's not the cost of that project. So if you ran the line from your place to West Carroll, they would hook up to it. So it's, they said I could do that. that yeah, I could run it. You'd have to run the line and get the easements through property through the twenty six hundred yes. feet. Yes. Um, but when they other people go to hook into it is when it becomes a Right. Supply line, I think, is how they word that. It's not a private line. Um, but the money part of it, last meeting, Carol said we can do it for twenty-five thousand. Right. <laughs> where'd where'd the hundred and fifteen thousand dollars go? You know. Um, like I said, I, and I told them the same. You know, I'll do all I can. You know, um, as far as whatever we need to do. I mean, I'll come out there and help somebody dig if that's what it takes. Um, and like I said, we did what we thought we needed to do up there and then we missed the deadline. It is what it is. But then he says now it's Trimble County's responsibility. And the other six residents, have you talked to them about? We had. We, and they, that was part of our paperwork. We had well the, I even went out of my pocket, paid for water samples mm -hmm. for everybody on that street and had them done. There's E. coli. Um, there's, I don't know, something else that was in there, and Neil told me, he was like, do not drink it, you know. 
And another thing, you know, we have cattle that are in the creek. Right. If we can get county water, I'll take them out of the creek. But other than that, that's my source. Um, so we even put that in our, you know, our letters why we needed this grant, and it never left their desk. You know, like I told them. That's West well, Carroll? Yes. I know we're not the only thing on your list, but you told us what to do. We've done it. Now we missed the deadline, and now it's somebody else's fault. <laughs> We appoint a member or two to West Carolina. We appoint two members to that. out to them and yeah. get to the bottom of it and see what. Yeah, I mean, let's get it going for them. Yeah. Good try. And, and I went to one of their water board meetings too. That's where we learned the number of 25,000. Okay. Yeah. And that was a big, excuse me? Yeah. What did you yeah, say? I had to ask. Yeah, I had to ask for <laughs> clarification. Yeah. How did how did they come up with that number? Because and our letter even states, you know, that every member on that road, we're willing to buy the meter. But as far as that, I mean, we can't afford, you know, my father recently passed away September of last year. So, I mean, that's one of my reasons trying to move there is to keep the farm. I mean, yeah. that's what it boils down to. Uh, <coughs> and they were just fishing for money, in my opinion, hoping that we would all write a check for $5,000 and take it to the for 10 grand, you know, but whatever. Uh, let's reach out to those members yeah. that we appoint and see what and, we can do. And I, I've talked to one of those, to one of those board members, and uh, but I would ask you all to do the same. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll all yeah. talk to them. In my opinion, the most cost-effective way would be the master meter. Um, yeah. I don't know what that entails. They name their price on that water or right. what that entails, but that's yeah. above me. Um, I'll, I'll do some digging and talk to them and see what we can find uh, out. We can take over that. Yes, sir. Uh, I think you look into the Ag Development Board fund that comes out of the tobacco money. Part of that money is supposed to go to every uh, residence, I believe it is, in the state of Kentucky. This is part of their mission. And has anybody even asked them about that? Is that out of the settlement, tobacco yeah. settlement? Yeah. Yes. <coughs> And that's the thing. I've, I've talked to Frankfurt. I've talked to everybody that I've tried to talk to. You know, I, I'm open to everything. I mean, I even told them, you know, if I have to do the paperwork for the grants, I'll do my best. But <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not aware of it. Water lines and then your water districts are required to go 50 foot per person to extend that line. Because back, it's been a few years back, um, but when my parents purchased the farm, they did extend the water line across Hardy Creek. Who knows what that cost across that creek, but they did it to supply one customer. And the house was vacant for five, six years after that. Mm -hmm. You know what size line they put, put her under? I'm pretty, pretty sure it's three. three That's, was that West Carroll or was that Trimble County? That was West Carroll. West Carroll. So yes. And, and you're 2,600 feet from, from that? Or? From West Carroll. Right, okay. Yes. All right. But you got to cross the creek. They, they have to cross one creek, uh -huh. um, which in the get-go, that was a $20,000 cost, but now mm -hmm. we can do the project for 25000 <laughs> the one question I would pose, and I got no dog in this fight, right. is there a county road, Hardy Creek Road, going over the hill? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can the water line be laid on the edge of that road on that county right away? Well, it would be rough. I know it would be rough, but I'm looking at logistics. He's trying to help this man and his mother get water. That's yeah. why I knew his dad. He was a fine man. And he got turned out. Everybody turned loose. So... You know, they're not being treated fairly. Right. What are we need well, to do? Well, I'll say when we moved in the county, we were the bad people because we had issues with trespassing and all that. But that's, hey, that's we bought the farm. <laughs> through the county right away, you saying? That's what I'm wondering, you know, and even even off the end of Trout Ridge where it goes down, of course you'd have to cross two Mike creeks to get to their house. Yeah. But see, that's where I went. Mike Turkey lives at the end of that. He's got through the city water. You know. That ain't very far from him. Well, no, I know over the hill. I know all across the. Yeah, well, I know. I'm just saying anywhere across. We right. still got creeks to cross, so yeah. you know that's. I went the route of coming across Weldy's Hilltop down to us just for the fact, like you said, the road, Hardy Creek Road is. I know, but and it's still county right. The county right. spent money. I just yeah. noticed about a month ago. Went down in the creek with a loader, pushed all the rock back up on Hardy Creek, put new culverts in. Wow. Right. <laughs> All it goes back there is dope heads and people that dump stuff. We have proof of it. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, that's a thought. I mean, we can look into it. I mean, well, that's I'm, a long way. I mean, definitely I mean, want down the road. Want in on it. And, and then come 
Say if we come over, how many customers would pick us? If you come, which direction? Where you're talking down Hardy Creek Road. You're going to pick up us. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You get off Hardy Creek Road, but if you come off of Turhams Hill, you'd have to cross the creek twice to get to. And you're only still going to pick up us. Just going to get them, but to cross again to pick up the other five. Yes, right. You come through West Carroll. That's why I said, really, I mean, the master meter is the way to go. You're going to pick up. Right, okay. There's six closest, people, I'm pretty sure. The closest. And the closest. It's I mean, it's right down a wide open yeah. bottom. Well, I, you can yeah, cross one creek. That's, uh, that's the most logical. Yeah. yeah. Because their first excuse was the Texas gas line, the Texas that. gas line, whatever that is. Right. You know, the Texas that, gas line. We've talked to them personally. It's very deep. It is eight foot in the ground, yeah. probably. You're taking, you're going three foot. Yeah. I mean, All right. That's, yeah. that's pretty it, good. And just to clarify for me, the master meter. Our water company would pay for that water and then bill them for their individual the customers. Yep. yep. Meters. Mm -hmm. So that's my understanding, if, if, you know. Yeah. But that's, that's why that's I didn't right. know if they named their price off at Master. Surely not. I would hope they would. I would say PSC controls everything. Yeah. yeah. And we would have a cost per gallon that we would have to adhere to. Yes. Sure. All right. Um, and then another thing the water board members, uh, they're. Uh, it, they're going to get appointed. You said they have to have some certification, some training. Well, hours. county water. They have. We to don't have county water. County water district. They have to live in a district, right? Yes. I mean, yes. Live in a district. Thank you. In that whatever yeah. area that is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah. Just for my mom's sake. I mean, she's. Right. And then um, I know this has been a big talk. I probably missed something, but the sludge farm ordeal is it? I assume by. Conversations or things being put in place or enforced? Maybe? Well, we're working on that, uh, but the way I understand it, the gentleman who had applied for the permits through the Division of Waste yeah. has pulled those requests, yeah. and his uh, request for a permit through the Division of Waste he has pulled that as well. But and what does that keep? And Joe Blow from coming and doing another. No, one. I think no. we. I think <laughs> we still have some things. Yeah, to be because that was the head of Hardy Creek. Was yeah. my R my concern? Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Yes, yeah. and, and I think we still have some things we need to iron out uh, to protect us in the future against other stuffs in other locations. Yes. yes. Uh, right. And another thing, ordinances, anything to help clean up Hardy Creek? Uh, yes, I went down there several times with Tina, and uh, they, the nuisance ordinance cleans it up. There's no other ordinance that is about cleaning. and. Uh, there has been progress made, but it's really bad. Yeah, yeah. It is small. Yeah, <laughs> you, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. You're yeah. not going to eat him yeah. one setting. Uh, but I know there's been a lot of improvement throughout the whole county. Yes. Yeah, uh, we, we've not stopped. Uh, I just, yeah. it's, it's pretty bad right now. I mean, it, it's pretty bad. So well, I'll take another drive down there. Living conditions and, you know, trailers that they just take apart. That one guy was supposed to, right there at the corner. You know, was piled stuff up next to the creek, which worried me because it would wash into the creek. And uh, I think we did get him a dumpster, and he probably filled it up. And uh, he was in the process of tearing down the trailers on somebody else's lot that had asked him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know he's got some, but he didn't get it all. Yeah. That's all I got. All right. Thank all right. you, Lance. All right. Does anybody else have anything, anything at all they'd like to say? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you both, gentlemen. Thank you all. Thank you all for attending.